Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So I've had a, a lot of you ask about upcoming events, things that are happening in the world, and what it's all pertaining to, and to decode this and to to, to decode that and da 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 da. da. Well, ooh, ooh, ooh. sorry, my YouTube was open. <laughs> so I'm going to do a quick decode for everything because a lot of y'all are asking me about the eclipse about beyonce's cowboy carter about you know all these things that's happening so the shift is into the divine feminine era like everything that's getting ready to happen is going to be towards the divine feminine so let's break it down a little bit so the eclipse is literally the sun or the moon covering the sun. The moon is a feminine symbol. The eight is a feminine symbol for eternity and fertility. Okay. So April 8th, eternity. Um, and then April is the fourth month. Four plus eight equals 12. And then you have the actual eclipse. So um, normally there were 13 months to go with women's period cycles for their menstrual cycle. So 13 would um, mark like the 13 period. So the moon is covering the sun, which is now reclaiming the divine feminine. And then the Cowboy Carter album where Beyonce is on a white horse, but she's going in the opposite direction that the horse is going um, with a flag that she, um, holding up. And then she has on you know, her red, white, and blue and all that kind of stuff. Um, so she's not going in the same direction as the horse, but she's going in the opposite direction. And she named the album Cowboy Carter. So this is this is sort of like the eclipse in itself. So the moon crosses the sun and goes in the opposite direction. Same thing. Um, and most of what, most of the eclipse is being seen from America. So that's why the American colors. Second thing is, um, well, that was the second thing. The other thing is we're shifting into the divine feminine where men and women are starting to realize the power of the divine feminine to the highest. And that's why you see a lot of shift in women doing better, doing more, demanding more, wanting the respect, wanting to, um, you know, have the things that they want and no longer you know, apologetic for who they are and how they act and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So but the, sh the shift is literally into the divine feminine. All the things will point to it. All you got to do is just look a little bit further. And this year, okay, so I was around, like this weekend, I was at the coast, you know, at the beach. And I noticed there was a lot of beautiful beach houses old historical beach houses, new modern beach houses. But a lot of them were for sale. And that was rare because we went maybe a while ago and not all of these houses were up for sale. Now, all of a sudden, every third or fourth house is for sale near the water. So, you know, my brain gets to clicking and I know, okay, so there's getting ready to be a strong storm season. So if you live near water or a coast or the Gulf Coast, there's most likely going to be a, a strong storm season and everyone is selling their um, beach houses and stuff because you can't insure them because there's no flood insurance. So um, if you live in Galveston or on the coast near the Gulf of Mexico, you might be in for a strong storm season, which is also associated with feminine energy, um, with like the Orisha and, you know, the, uh, feminine water storm energy. So be careful if you live near a coast, because that's what this year is going to bring. Get your life jackets, sprinkle, sprinkle. You said they're running from Diddy. Okay, so I don't really talk, like to talk about too many celebrities, but since they are a part of what's happening, so Diddy is finally being, you know, looked at because of how he treated lots of women and men. You know, um, 
and you know that were affiliated with him or whatever so this is literally like the symbol for justice is literally a woman with a scale and a blindfold um there's another there's another um goddess type statue in Galveston where I was and she has a sword that's covered with flowers and um a laurel a uh, wreath, you know, that like a crown, and she's holding it. So these are symbolic for the masculine and the feminine symbol. And she's holding up the wreath and holding down the sword. So that's a symbol of either balance or as above, so below, or her um, feminine energy is because, you know, the wreath is like, you know, the portal, the vagina. So she's holding that up. And she, the statue is literally right by the ocean. So it's kind of giving honor to goddesses and it says justice on the bottom of that statue. If you've ever been to Galveston, you've probably seen that statue that says justice and it has the large goddess with the wreath and the sword. All right. So I don't do readings anymore, only for myself if I want to. So, um, because there were too, there's too many people now that are subscribed and plus a lot of people, um, don't really know how to receive readings. So I no longer give them. Okay. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, you said they have a woman that's painted on the big building downtown. Yeah. I saw that in Houston. There's also a large mural on a huge building. It's probably the courthouse or a huge building downtown near the courthouse of a woman holding up the scales of justice and like the blindfold on and the blindfold on and she's a black woman. And so um, that's, you know, the symbol of justice. So literally you're going to see a lot of symbolism for the divine feminine. Um, you're going to see a lot of symbols for the divine feminine seeking justice, but also at the same time um, teaching, you know, uh, there's a whole shift that's happening where people have to teach and bring in the divine feminine and help women uh, to realize their worth and their place and their divinity. And men are starting to realize this as well. And so those who aren't meshing well with the shift, they are, I mean, they're literally sticking out like sore thumbs and are upset and mad and angry for no reason. But if you, if you just look a little bit closer, a lot of men have always honored the divine feminine by caring for them, by creating a safe space for them, by making sure they have everything they need, by acknowledging their divine, you know, energy, such and such and such, you know. So, those guys are doing very well right now. They're prospering. They, you know, they're, they're just going along with that shift. You know, it's, it's one thing to acknowledge and to celebrate and to um, honor versus to fight against, to degrade and to, you know, do wrong. So any, if anything, you know, if you are spiritual, religious, or whatever you are, the highest form and the closest being to God is a woman on the planet. So, you know, that's why a lot of people are saying God is a woman or, you know, the feminine or the divine feminine side of the energy is shifting into this um, shift. So this is why you're seeing a lot of these things happen. And the whole thing about the Texas and Beyonce thing and wanting to be recognized in the industry and do a country song and all this kind of stuff is that it's, it's, it took a woman to be able to break into that genre of her, of her fame in order to shift and change things to her favor. And she also put like a lot of other female and also male um, country singers that were black on her album in order to, you know, allow them to get their foot in the door, the recognitions that, you know, they deserve and, you know, bust it wide open basically. 
And uh, if you remember on her Lemonade album, on the video, she was dressed in all yellow like Oshun. And she had the baseball bat and all the waters were flowing down the steps. You know, that was one of the indications of the shift that was, you know, getting ready to come. And, um, of course, you have, you know, um, all these water energies that are connected to the feminine, divine feminine energy. And so you are allowing, you know, change to happen and flow to happen and going in the direction. You know, water allows things to shift, to move like down rivers and valleys and all this kind of stuff. So you're going to see a shift going more towards the divine feminine world. You're going to see a lot more. You already see it now, but you're going to see a lot more female business owners, a lot more wealthy women. Um, you're going to see a lot more um, protection of women and gratitude towards women and things like that. You'll see a lot of it now, but there has been a strong fight to oppress the feminine energy that like a spring, boing, it, it, you can't suppress it for very long. And the longer you suppress something, when it's finally released, it comes back even stronger. And so it's literally a force. So that's what the shift is, is going towards right now. And that's a good thing because women are nurturing. Women care. They have more empathy. They have more solutions. They're multitaskers. And so that's a lot of the energy that a, pe that a lot of people need right now in order to thrive. And we like to do things, you know, find the easy way to do things. So technology is steadily increasing, allowing women to live their feminine, you know, live in their feminine more than they could have, than they used to. So um, you said the strong get it. Yeah. And that's a good thing. So, yeah, the shift that we all know is here has a lot to do with the current things that are happening, like in the media and in the entertainment industry. Blah, 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 blah. Um, so make sure, and, and I'll say this, make sure at some at some point or sometime you're honoring the divine feminine in your life, whether it be your mother, your sisters, cousins, daughters, yourself. You know, especially if you're a man, you need to find a woman to, you know, honor and whatever, however you treat her, uh, it needs to be good. So. Just find one. And a lot of guys may be like, okay, well, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that because that means I'm a simp. Well, it also like if you don't honor the, the women, then you know, a lot of times it's because there's something deep within you that resents women for some reason. It, it could be jealousy, it could be you had a bad childhood, or your mother was not nice to you, or something like that. But at the same time, not everybody is your mother. You know, what if you have a daughter one day? Are you going to treat her bad? Are you not going to give her the things she needs in life because it will make you a simp? Giving, like fathers giving to their daughters and things like that, it's the same thing as a husband giving to his wife or, you know, a man giving to um, whatever, because it's still the divine feminine in whatever vessel you put her in. So that's what I'm saying. Your daughter is going to learn from how you treat their mothers about how men treat women. So that's very, very important to treat the mother right, because the daughter is learning from how you treat her and how most men are going to treat her when she grows up. So if she sees you treat her mom bad, she's not going to like men very much, or she's not going to trust men very much, or she's going to think all men are like you. So that's why it's very important to honor the woman and treat her right, especially if you have children by her. Okay. Because you're going to, you're going to, um, you know, show yourself to be something that they don't want. And a lot of, a lot of women have grown up like this. Okay. So be careful. You said, can she or even cook? My culinary degree says that I am qualified to cook. <laughs> okay. In fine dining establishments. But does that mean I cook for a man who won't appreciate it? No. It doesn't mean that at all. 
And he's, I cook for money, man, sir. <laughs> and, you know, okay, the divine feminine energy is a feminine, is a feminine energy of abundance as well. So y'all have to remember that too. What comes with this shift is wealth, increased wealth. If you're smart and know how to read the signs, like I told y'all about all those houses for sale near the coast. Okay. So an unknowing person who's been wanting to buy a house by the beach forever is now probably looking at those houses and getting ready to try to buy something unknowing that it's probably going to be a really bad storm season because, you know, they're just focused on what they want. But when you are, when you're able to see more, you have a higher intuition because you're tapped into your feminine energy, you're going to notice the little things that most people don't. And so um, I've noticed that a lot of businesses have closed up near the coast and a lot of houses are getting ready to go up for sale when they weren't that way a couple of months ago. And so um, and these houses are nice and very hard to get for the last few years. OK, so because I know I've been looking. And <laughs> mm -hmm. did I do face fillers? No, I did fat. It's called eating. <laughs> Y'all know my weight shifts and goes up and down and I hold water weight. I'm, I'm tired of explaining it to you. I don't have no face fillers, ma'am. It's just called eating good. <laughs> All right. If you, you know, I feel like. Thank y'all. If y'all, I, I take it as a compliment because it means I still look youthful. The girl is just fat. <laughs> okay. On a side note, if you if you gain and lose weight, don't get face fillers because when you gain your weight back, it's gonna go on top of the face fillers. <laughs> All right, because I've seen some people. You know how those people that look botched really bad? It's because they got fillers and then they gained weight. So. If you if you're a person that fluctuates in your weight, do not get fillers because you can fill yourself back up naturally by eating. All right. You said siren splash is unavailable. Oh no. Let me check my let me let me check and see why. They might be making more of it because it is it is handmade. Um so it might be back up on very soon so just check back but i'll definitely check and see why because um you know you don't want to get backed up in orders that you can't fill so if they're working on making new batches that's probably what it is but let me go ahead and make sure All right. Anyway, thank you all for being here. So um, in my last video, when we talked about, you know, water magic and things like that, I mentioned some mermaid books that I had ordered from Amazon and they arrived. And I have a link for you guys for uh, all the items and stuff I suggest on Amazon spiritually that I talk about on these videos. And there's the link right there. I just linked it. It's also the second um, comment from the top of the live feed. So this is the first book that I got and it's called Mermaids, the Myth, Le Legends, and Lore. This is a really good informative book about the history of the lore of mermaids and just little facts and things like that. It's very simple to read and uh, the writing is in blue too. and there's like little drawings in there. So I haven't, I think I've gotten to like chapter three or four because I was reading on while I was on my mini vacation. And then I got the mermaid handbook. Um, it sounds lots of feminine stuff, like feminine energy stuff. It goes into the fashion of mermaid, how it Im impacts the fashion world. Um, if you like high fashion and stuff. And then it goes into like, there are uh, the makeup tutorials, um, crafts to make your own hair, mermaid accessories and combs and stuff. It's a really cute book. It's a girly girl book, I'll say. There's also stories in the history and things like that, like Victorian mermaids. So if you just like a nice big coffee table book and you like mermaids and crafts and fashion and history, then this is the book for you. So it's really cute. 
It's kind of like a Martha Stewart meets a fashion book for mermaids. <laughs> okay. Um, mermaids, they like seaweed. Yeah, it does say what they eat. No, I, I don't see this. I forgot the chat. Okay, food, entertaining, and stories of the sea. So, um, let's see if they have a recipe or something in here. I'm sure that's what's next. Of course, seafood. Uh, oh, this is so cute. Look at this car. It's all seashell. Uh oh, sunshine, sprinkle, sprinkle. It's a good spiritual season to marry for wealth. I want to be a philanthropist. First step in the plan is to marry wealth. Okay, great. Marry someone that honors women, though, because like in, in my other video, I always tell you guys, I mean, on my other channel, I always tell you guys to marry or deal with someone who likes you way, way, way more than you like them. Okay. And this goes along with the divine feminine because. Uh, if you have a man that almost literally worships you, he's going to treat you the way you want to be treated. And that's why I'm saying if to honor the divine feminine in yourself and to recognize the divine feminine in yourself, you need someone that treats you like you're divine. A lot of women have forgotten their divinity because they put up with people that treat them like they are nothing or are less than what they really are. And this is why so many women have lower self-esteem. So if you go for a man that likes you way, way, way more, you're going to be able to tap into your divine femininity a lot faster than you would having to seek validation every day from someone who doesn't even like you that much that you're struggling to keep. That's, that's fact, okay? Think of yourself as a goddess or think about how people go to church and worship God. Those people have to like their God or their deity way more than they like themselves in order to give tithes and offerings, to go to church every Sunday, to wear symbols that, you know, um, reflect their religion, to call themselves whatever religion that they are, to model their lifestyle, morals, and values after said deity. Well, if you as a woman want to be held on a pedestal and given the divine treatment, that's why you have to deal with men that recognize that in you, which means they like you way, way more. You will get there faster, okay, mentally. And spiritually, if you find a guy like that, otherwise you're not going to ever see your divinity because you're going to be too busy looking, you know, for approval from someone else when you already have it naturally because you're a woman. Okay. I know that a guy that would be worshiping me, but I'm not attracted to him. He is childhood's friend's advice. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, here's my thing. And a lot of times we have to think of it like, how do you want to be treated? Do you think, and this is more from my other channel, but do you think an attractive man is going to treat you as good as someone who is honored to be in your presence? Just think about that for a second. And you're going to look at this person every day and you're going to get used to whatever they look like. But if that person likes you way, way, way more, it's going to take them a lot longer to get used to you ever being normal to them. You get it? So, uh, have you ever had to dissolve your lip filler? No. I'm telling y'all, it's fat. <laughs> so, I've never had to do any of those things. I don't get permanent anything. If, if I ever got something in my lips, it was never permanent and it dissolved on its own. But I don't get anything on my face, y'all. I know I look extra plump and good. Let me tell y'all a secret. I moisturize like crazy. My skin routine will make y'all mad. I, <laughs> okay. I have several steps in my skin routine. Several, a lot. Y'all, y'all seen those, um, videos or those reels or TikToks with those people that have like 18 steps in their skin routine. <laughs> okay. 
I'll be on it. All right. Plus, I drink lots of water and lots of vegetables, lots of all of that. I don't like, yeah, I don't smoke. I barely drink. So maybe once a month I might have a drink. So I, I try to keep myself looking good, okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Don't eat meat. Nope. I, yeah, I don't have a lot of stress in my life either. So that's another thing. <laughs> I moisturize several times a day. You said I'm a Pisces. Yeah, I'm a Pisces. I look youthful. Okay, so another thing, the shift that's coming up. So many people are, okay, so so many people are asking about that eclipse and why is it only being seen or why is it being seen from like certain cities named after places in the Bible? And I think I think one of the places was Salem and the like uh and another place was uh Nineveh. There's like cities named like this in the U.S. Okay, so Salem was where the witchcraft uh, witchcraft trials took place. So most of the witchcraft trials that took place was because men couldn't have the women that they wanted, or they wanted the land that the women owned after their husbands died, or they wanted to get revenge on a woman, or they, they you know, they were they were not, you know, being fair towards women who knew herbal remedies and stuff like that that wouldn't share or give it to them for free. So they started accusing women of witchcraft if they didn't like them or if they, you know, the woman did like attracted someone's husband or something. So it was literally an oppression, an oppression of women. A, a lot of men were also hung for practicing too, but at the same time, it was mostly around surrounding women. And so the city of Nineveh in the Bible was about, um, going and, and telling people to repent and do better. But the, the, the dude, Jonah, he said no. And so a giant fish swallowed him up and then spit him back out and made him go do right. So a, a fish or, uh, is also symbols for, you know, the divine feminine. Um, yeah, uh, one of the symbols for like Yamaya or, um, just, all the water and the symbolism and the fish, it's like his judgment. So he better go back and do right. And a lot of times, um, so a lot of times people have to be told again what to go do and you better get it right this time. And so those stories and those cities in the Bible have a lot to do with, you know, feminine um, justice. Um, and you know, in, in the song, I know y'all probably heard Texas Hold'em for the 18th millionth time, but there's a part in that song that's very prophetic. And I know a lot of y'all probably heard it. And, um, the, the part where it says there's, um, there's a heat wave. What she says first, she says, there's a tornado in my city. Hit the basement. That's that beef ain't pretty. And then another part on that song, she says, "There's a heat wave coming at us. Too hot to think straight. Too cold to panic." So that within itself is almost like a prediction in, um, you know, what's to come. So a strong storm season. Solar flare. Sprinkle, sprinkle. But not the solar flare is not going to be as bad as you think, but it's still going to want to make you drink because she said, hit the bar. <laughs> All right. So I, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to cause a lot of issues with probably a little bit of. Uh, if, if you already. If
Hmm. All right, sorry, y'all. Can y'all still hear me? Can y'all hear me? That was my fault, y'all. I, I touched the camera thing and it disconnected. The government. <laughs> Maybe that was a warning sign not to go too much further. But anyway, yeah. So having a drink kind of, you know, relaxes you from being up so uptight and, and worrying about certain things. So she just told y'all what was getting ready to go down. Strong storm season and solar flare. But y'all can probably look that up online. But a lot of people are too busy doing TikToks and on Instagram and shopping online to do any type of research unless they are conspiracy theorists. So scientifically, if you look at the weather model or, you know, the space weather model, you'll probably see something that's um, going to coincide with a lot of the messages that are being put out right now. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, what'd you say? The Bible said, do what? Leave a drink for those that are perishing. Yeah. So water. Y'all know I love Miss Michael Jackson. On on the end of This Is It, or on one of the end of, end of the songs on This Is It, he said, water. And so like a lot of times, like that represents the divine feminine. And a lot of people forget that. They just think women are supposed to be maids and laundromats and dishwashers and cooks. You know, they forget that they're we are the very reason that people are actually here on the planet. So <laughs> celebrate five years in September. No liquor since June. No weed since March. Thank you for helping me live myself. Honor the goddess within. Girl, thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle Pashmina. I appreciate you. And congratulations on that. Yes. <laughs> he said, here in my culture, they won't let you attend church if you are on your period. Well, that's because it's a, and your religion is probably male dominated and patriarchy. Um, they're just telling there wouldn't be here if there was no periods. Sprinkle, sparkle. And neither would the church. <laughs> that's why I don't do religion because religion was literally hijacked from goddess worship and turned into patriarchal uh, uh, religion is literally jack from goddess worship and flipped to honor men because the blood of Jesus is actually a period <laughs> okay because him hanging on a cross is a uterus when you go on Easter to find Easter eggs, that's a sperm hunting for the egg. It's all fertility. And so when men get mad because the original worship of goddesses was widespread throughout the world, they got mad and tried to get the same type of, you know, acknowledgement by forcing, by war, forcing people into religion and worshiping men. And they try to hide the old pagan ways in the religion and disguise it so you wouldn't recognize it as goddess worship. And, you know, the Catholic religion and some of the Hindu religions that have female deities um, or saints and things like that are the only ones that actually acknowledge the woman as divine. And so I feel like if you're in a religion that literally push your, pushes your self-esteem down as a woman, it's time to get up out of there or fake it and go do your own learning, you know, <laughs> because it is not, it is a brainwashing tool to keep you unknowing of your divinity. Now, I would, I would never stay in a religion that did not honor me as a divine goddess. I would be out with the middle finger sticking up, period. <laughs> anyway, don't I would never do that. I I know who I am too much to even sit in a in a building where people think that they didn't come out of my body as a, as a divine feminine energy. How dare they? 
And that's exactly why the things, the shift is occurring because people forgot where they came from, literally. <laughs> and so, you know, <laughs> he said, just become your own God. Exactly. Become your own God or goddess and honor yourself and don't try to put the other one down unless they're trying to oppress you. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. You said what? In Hindu, we pray goddesses for money, not male gods. <laughs> because for everything comes from the woman. Even the male gods have to be birthed out of a goddess. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So, you know, that's why. Out of the ocean came life. And the ocean is symbolism for the divine feminine. So out of the ocean sprang life. The womb. I have not watched Dune to decode it. I'm so sorry. Okay, let me read some of these questions. Why did the Bible say let's make man in our image? Because at that time, the masculine and the feminine were merged into one. So just think about this. If a woman has X and Y chromosome, that's R. That's two, right? What chrome, like what, what are the males? You know, they have the same. It's no R. It's the same. So um, even a woman who, who could create a man who have the chromosomes and the DNA to produce a son. And when you do the mitochondrial DNA and track, you know, the DNA back to the mom, if you even look in the man's sperm, most of that sperm is mitochondrial DNA back to the mother. So that's why God is literally a woman. So, and then if you remember the story of Lilith, how Adam wanted to rule over her sexually or to be on top sexually and Lilith was like you know what you ain't getting ready to rule over me I, I don't think so so you know she left and they you know demonized her but then he wanted a woman that he could rule over which is the start of patriarchy so there they made Eve but when Eve started getting her own mind because she started listening to the serpent which represents wisdom uh, in the in the Bible, she said, yeah, I'm going to do what I want. And so she ate the fruit from the tree and then she told him to eat it and he ate it. And then she became over him once again. And they were kicked out because they were kicked out of the garden because he let her rule over him once again. But that's how it always is. And then she got the, the pains from childbirth and she said, look, I made a man. So it go it keeps going in a cycle like they they lie and say that a man made a woman, but then why does the man have nipples and a belly button, and where's his uterus to carry the woman, and and you know so they keep trying it's like a battle of patriarchy and the divine you know and, and feminine or matriarchy, but without the mother there is no father without the mother there's no son or daughter or anything. So it will never be patriarchy for long. It's always going to be, you know, the matriarchy is always going to show itself. Can tarot readings hold us back from manifesting? If you believe them, sprinkle, sprinkle. Like I said, that's why I don't do readings anymore because people take tarot readings as fact. It's not fact. It's like this. It's like, it's like a mother's advice because a mother can see that person is not that good for you. If you stay with them, they're just going to bring you down. It doesn't mean that person is going to bring you down. It means if you choose to stay with them, they will bring you down. So you're going to have to make some changes. If you didn't want to know that, then don't ask that. You know what I'm saying? So, for example, it's always people on the outside that can see what you can't see. You know? So make sure you're understanding that. And also 
if you if you're stubborn and you don't want to hear it and you don't want to make any changes, then you're going to manifest it anyway because you believed it and you paid your money and you said, OK, well, this is what might happen. And now your subconscious mind is going to make it happen even faster. So if you don't want if you don't want to know, then don't ask. Ask questions that you do want to know. Change your questions when you do a reading or don't ask questions at all and just see what what, what it says. And if you don't like tarot, try oracle cards. There are, a lot of those are more positive. Okay. Um, how do you align yourself with your intended life? I'm always getting carried away, tired of clients giving power to cardboard cards. What? Oh, I just mixed up two messages. Hold on. Okay. Get okay. Sometimes you, you say you, you gotta get away from toxic family. Get away from people and be alone for a while. Know yourself. See what you really want without interference. Okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's why. That's how. Is there a way to predict the future? There are signs everywhere. There are symbols everywhere. There are people that create what's going to happen. So if you know, you know. That's all I'm going to say. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> if you know, you know. So, how do you overcome the fear of getting into dark goddess energy and researching? If you have fear, don't even do it. Or just do it and don't care. Because fear is what holds you back. Fear is something that hasn't even happened to you yet. The fear of learning is stupid. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Fear of knowledge is dumb. You know, if you know something, you know it. If you fear to know it, it's because fear is close, closely related to ignorance. Because you don't know it. That's why you fear it. Once you know it, you'll no longer fear it. So I'm just going to know. <laughs> and then you don't have to fear once you know. So, for example, if somebody told you something and you believe them because they experienced something, it doesn't mean you're going to experience the same thing. You're a totally different person. You think different. And you may have a totally different perspective and outlook on life. Okay. So it just depends. Have you ever met someone that's scared of something that's totally ridiculous and you laugh at them? It's the same thing to me. Like I, every time I see people that are afraid of cats, I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> Laughing. What the heck? That's the same thing to me. All right. They want to make you fear power. They don't want you nowhere near your power, ma'am. That's why they put fear into you. Um, this is spiritually safe to look at the eclipse. If you got the right glasses, ma'am, are you going to be seeing as the moon going over the sun, the divine feminine energy taking over? Okay. <laughs> What is the symbolism behind all the wars? How, when has there not been war, ma'am? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Name me a time on the earth since you've been alive or since your grandmama been alive or since your great-great-grandmama been alive that there hasn't been a war. Now wait. Okay. Best way to use dark energy to shift your mindset. Um, close your eyes and then imagine what you want. There you go. Tap into your divine energy by learning who you are and what power you really have. And only dealing with people that recognize your divine feminine energy. Don't deal with no dust. 
do you offer one-on-one -on -one mentor? No. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm so sorry. I don't have time for that, but the videos are there. Read books that I recommend. Read the book that I write. Look, check the description bar. I do have a Patreon where you can ask me a question um, and I'll message you back. Um, it's in the description bar, on Patreon. Okay. Do you think witchcraft has only has peer on someone if they believe it? Oh, power. I want to find. Um, witchcraft is very interesting. It has a lot of power, just like the news channel has a lot of power. So interpret that like you will. Think about that. Sure, what is your necklace pendant? This is a seashell, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. So, oh, and also I'm going to show you all my ring. Look what I got. It's a labradorite, which is the matrix stone. Do you all know anything about that? And it's like a heart. So I like, I like, I got it. I had to have it. <laughs> I was always carrying my labradorite with me everywhere I went. And I would have to, when I switch purses, it's like I got to, and it's a big stone. So I finally found a ring with a giant labradorite. And I'm, you know, I'm like, you know what? I can just wear it. <laughs> yes. So, Labradorite is very good, especially for women, in my opinion. What the heck is this? Oh, someone sent me a cash app. Thank you, Miley. I appreciate you. Sorry, somebody sent me a message I didn't want to read right now. <laughs> so I was getting ready to look it, look it up and read it to you guys so that y'all can get a better understanding. They make a lot of jewelry with Labradorite. It's really nice. So it helps you regain your energy while aiding the body and spirit in healing itself. In the metaphysical world, it's considered one of the most powerful protectors. The gemstone creates a shield for auras and protects against negativity of the world. Okay. Um, it also is... Hold on. Let me type in something else. Okay, I'm trying to find that one. Anyway, get you some Labradorite. It's very pretty too. Okay, it also is a powerful ally in enhancing one's intu intuition and mental abilities of telepathy, clairvoyance, astral traveling, prophecy, and past life recall, and psychic energies. So... Um, it's a good stone to have. Just look, just do your research on it. I've been wearing, I've been carrying it for years, <laughs> years. Labradorite looks like this, and it's a stone, and it's 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 thick. It's not going to be like a shell or anything it's like a thick stone uh oh anonymous sprinkle sprinkle did you put a spell in your new perfume <laughs> well it's called siren's splash it has the energies of the ocean the divine feminine and you you my yay sprinkle sprinkle okay very good because like at this time when the divine feminine is shifting um you know more and more into this era you're going to need to um start learning about yourselves as you know divine feminine beings connecting and learning about 
um, divine feminine spirits, energies, and goddesses to help you understand yourself better. And so I definitely feel like, you know, smelling good, taking care of yourself, making sure you look good is part of it. Okay. That's part of your power and your divine feminine energy. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, thank you, Kayla. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate that. She sent me a cash app too. Let me see if there's any notes on there. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Sip, your Maya is very helpful and relatively easy to work with. Yeah. How can I make him submit using my dark feminine energy? Okay. They got to like you way, way more. It's also who you choose to surround yourself with, you know. Um, you know, okay, let me give you all an example. If you look the part and you act the part, dress up, do your makeup, do your hair, act like a goddess, act better than, act, act divine. Put yourself on a pedestal first or no one else will. Okay, act like you know who you are. That's how. You know, any tips for someone just learning about spiritual alchemy? I love and appreciate you. Thank you so much. Um, I would say mm, just learning about spiritual alchemy, universal laws um, are very interesting thing to learn and will help you learn how to transmute negative energies. That's number one or negative thoughts or negative um, situations. So study the law of transmutation because that's the one that I use the most. And then whatever else calls to you or that you're interested in or that you like learning about, then go, go in that direction. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Do I believe in God? Do I believe in me? Yeah. Singing that Prince song. Controversy. Um, if I believe if if I believe God is a woman, then at one point I believed in God because I was in a womb. And I believed that I would get nourishment. I believed that I would have been taken care of. I believed that I was safe. I believed that I was cared for and I, I was in the darkness. And then I was brought into the light. So if, if God is a woman, then yes. If not, heck no. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle. Okay. That's the answer. I don't believe in a man. Because how many times have you believed in a man that they didn't come through? <laughs> Y'all, the record is not good. So. Are gonna believe women have come through more for me in my life than men, and I have to see that as a reflection of divinity more than women, more than a man. You know what I'm saying? So, if I had to choose, if God was a woman or a man, I'm hoping it's a woman, because women, think about this: you want God to be a woman, because a man don't care. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> You said I have lipstick on my tooth. Thank you. You said, why did Jesus call God the father? He didn't even know who his daddy was. What are you talking about? He said, heavenly father. The one that didn't exist. The one that left. So, you know, I've been reading books about Mary. And why people never really talk about her. It's very interesting. So she lived, supposedly lived in a temple or a, 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 a holy temple with priests. This could be all metaphor. And when she became 12 years old. They said, we got to kick her out of here and get, and marry her off somewhere because she's about to start her period. 
and she cannot defile the church or whatever, the holy place, the temple. So she left. They they went and found some widowers or you know whose wives had already died to marry her off. So they went and found Joseph and he was old. He already had grown kids and she was 12. So they say, okay, you got to marry her and take her to your house. And Joseph was like, she's just a child. I can't be seen out in public with this child. I got grown kids. And they begged him to take her. Now, this is Mary, the mother of Jesus. Got no Mary Magdalene. So this is Jesus's mom. So he had grown sons, grown kids, and he was a traveling merchant or something. I don't know. So he took her home, left her at, at his house, left, traveled for business. When he came back, she was pregnant. And she said, he was like, I can't do this. Mm -mm. And so she was like, but I've known no man. So either she was lying or somebody drugged her or she had, she was pregnant from a priest. We don't know. Or one of the grown kids in the house. But back then people did not want to shame their families. So they would make up, Oh, it's a miracle. Or, and God said, or angels came to me and did whatever. You know what I'm saying? And said this and said that. So somebody says she was punching something. So the only reason Jesus didn't really have a father because nobody told him who his father was. Okay. It was like Maury Povich and he didn't know who the father was. So they didn't have no DNA test back then. So if you don't know who your daddy is, you just go. Just like little kids always say, I wish that was my daddy or God is my father because he didn't have no, he didn't have no real daddy. He had a stepdaddy. His brothers and sisters looked different from him because they were from a different father. <laughs> and there was a time where he was uh, about 12 years old himself and he was left behind from some type of family pilgrimage and he was left behind by accident and he spent the weekend talking with all these priests and they taught him about God and all this stuff and brainwashed him probably. And Mary realized that Jesus wasn't with the whole group and they had to turn back around and walk back like a day or two to get back and to get Jesus. So she, she went and found him and she walked in the temple and back then women weren't really supposed to do uh, talk to men or they they weren't really acknowledged but he but Jesus was so smart Mary was honored by these priests saying your child is something special and she said I know and then they went home right so the mom went back for him because you know he was only 12 and she had left him so he, then he started to, after that he started saying that God was his father and he wanted to do his father's work because the people in there were fathers, priests, and such and such. If you read the story of Mary, it's all up in there. The stuff, you know. So, you know, during this time of the divine shift back into the feminine, you should study more of the women, especially Mary, in the Bible. Because she wouldn't, she, you know, she was a little, she was a character. <laughs> okay. Where can you purchase the ring that I'm wearing? I got this from a special tea shop in Galveston called Milagros. Milagro is a Spanish name in Galveston. They probably have an online store. Just look up Milagro, Galveston, Texas, and they might have a website. And I think they had another one, maybe two or one, one or two more. They had some other Labradorite, Labradorite rings in different shapes. But look it up online. I'll, I'll type it in. Milagro. Milagro. And then just type in Galveston. Texas. And I'm sure their shop will come up or some type of website. Shout out to Milagro. The dude that was working there was trying to flirt with me. 
when he was selling me to, after he, after I bought the ring. He was like, you look like you could be a mermaid. He said, you look like you can turn into a mermaid. I was like, I'm at the beach. I'm wearing mermaid clothes. No, I didn't say that. I have my little outfits together, yes. Anyway. All right. Anyway, go read the story of Mary. Y'all gonna be surprised. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, let me show y'all something. Um, this is a Catholic book, but it does go into a little bit of it. It's called the Compendium Marium, Compendium of Marian Devotions. It has like really nice pictures and history and stories that's in also not just from the Bible, but from other books too, other holy books. And there's other Mary books that will say how Mary was mentioned in different holy books as well. Oh, this one, Mary Adept, Queen Mother Priestess, that's the one. And it's very technical and historical and has lots of quotes and things from different holy books where Mary is also mentioned, different versions and all this kind of stuff. So if you want like facts, or not, not really facts, but like um, if you want like, what do you call these things? What do you call these things where they give you the information where they got the information from? Whatever these things are. If you want like sources, there you go. This book has lots of sources. So you know exactly where they're getting the information from. So, you know, you always think about the person that they made, you know, all that, but you forget where they came from and who raised them and who taught them. <laughs> you know, he said nonfiction. Um, before there was Mary, there was an archetype before Mary, which was a goddess, a pagan goddess, Isis. There's Yibaye, Oshun. All these women, um, all these women, all these goddesses, all these energies and spirits came before Mary. And they're, they're very much related to her and her archetype. All gods come from goddesses. Period. So. Ishtar, Astarte, all of that. So they predate the Bible. Goddesses predate gods. So therefore, like the, the oldest statue that they found is goddess statues. You know, so just know that. <laughs> He said, I spice, real name is Isis. Mm -hmm. You see, what does Mary want for you? Okay, when Mary, uh, this is when Mary appears to you or bothers you, as you're saying, tap into your divine feminine energy, know thyself, know thy power, and teach others. Now, oh, India, sprinkle, sprinkle, any suggested reading for learning how to decode? Um, symbolism books. Um, Anything that alchemy and symbolism books are going to help you because they're very much like everything is symbolic of something. Everything is a metaphor. Everything is symbolic of something else. And just look up spiritual meanings of whatever it is that you're wondering about how to decode. So, for example, spiritual meaning of, let's say, a white horse. Spiritual meaning of just type that into Google and the spiritual meanings are going to come up or you can get a symbolism book or just type in. What does the symbol of such and such mean? That's how you start decoding. You just have to do research until you memorize what things mean without having to look them up. And sometimes you still got to look them up because you can't memorize everything. <laughs> Anyone is fine. Just find a good one that has a lot of symbols in it. Okay. I might have some link in the second um, link in the live comments from the top. Mm -hmm. <sighs> yeah, decoding is fun until it becomes like annoying. So if you're around people that don't like this sort of 
information, it becomes annoying to them. So it should be like a little personal um, hobby of yours, if that's what you like when, like, when you like to do it. But don't try to drag everyone else into it that is not able to see uh, because they might not want to or don't care. <laughs> okay. He said, they say the white horse is the antichrist. Yeah. And that's why on the album, Beyonce is riding it backwards. Like she's going in the opposite direction of it. Like she's sitting on that white horse. The white horse is going forward, but she's turned in the opposite direction. It's very interesting. <laughs> and if you think about what the antichrist really symbolizes, it's, it's sort of like, okay, so Christ would be the child that was born, right? Or the Antichrist would be the child that's not born. <laughs> or the child, yeah. So you have the whole fertility thing, right? You have Jesus's birth, right? And then you have his death. But the death is right by Easter, which is the symbol for fertility and renewal. That's why he's reborn, because he's just an egg and your uh, ovary that is reborn. The sun or you have an egg and it looks like a yolk in the, the sun. It's just reborn and another chance to be uh, fertilized and born into the earth from the goddess Astarte, Easter. Okay, so it's a it's it's a symbol of rebirth. And why is he born in winter, which is symbolic for death? So he's born into death and he dies into rebirth in the spring. So therefore it's a cycle, a menstrual cycle. Um, if you're not if your egg is not fertilized, then that's the Antichrist. It doesn't make it in this world goes down the toilet or in a pad or in a tampon. <laughs> okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You're still pure. You haven't been pregnant. You haven't been impregnated. Okay. Um, you said talk about Beyonce's album. I liked it. I thought it was very good, very well rounded. I heard a lot of Prince inspo in there. I heard a lot of like 70s rock, like Fleetwood Mac sounds in there, Dolly, Tina Turner. Um, it's, uh, I heard that Stevie Wonder played uh harmonica on Jolene. I thought it was good. Hey, Queen Sprinkle times two are you decoding Beyonce album yeah so in my opinion just from my thought this doesn't mean this is true Joel a lot of people say Jolene is a pick Misha song because Beyonce is saying you better not come for her man it's symbolic in my opinion it's not literal <laughs> so of course y'all know I'm gonna tell y'all to do the first thing I'm gonna tell y'all to do is look up the name Jolene meaning what does the name Jolene mean? It means God will increase while others claim that it means God is gracious. Okay. It means God is gracious. Okay. Hey, that, there's a lot of names that mean that actually. So, if God is a woman or a goddess, don't come for my man. I'm warning you, don't you try to attack my man. Don't drag his name through the dirt. Don't do him like y'all did, did. Sparkle, sparkle. He's laying low. He doing right. He doing what he's supposed to do, being a good father. Don't judge him. You are so smart, know your stuff, love your decoding, especially on Beyonce. People always decode her wrong. Thank you, girl. Spark, spark. If you ever notice, Jay-Z is always wearing all black, got his little sunglasses on. He can keep a low profile, doing right, being a good daddy, you know, doing right by his woman. You know, he ain't acting up no more or whatnot. He, he's in repentance, <laughs> walking behind her, making sure she's good. You know, doing his little side projects. He made that movie about the time of Jesus, remember? 
when this dude was trying to get famous like Jesus was by performing the miracles that Jesus performed. And Jay-Z had, came out with that movie and his museum, his hip hop museum. So he's been busy, but, you know, behind the scenes more. So she's saying, don't come for my man. Y'all better go find find who's really out there doing this mess. <laughs> go get Diddy. That's what basically, don't come for my man. Don't judge him. I got him. All right. It's not about a, a literal woman. It's about the wrath of women. The justice that the divine feminine is now seeking. That's what it's about. Okay. Do you think they'll be exposed this year? There's nothing to expose about them. Like literally, there's nothing to expose about them. Um, people want that to be true because there are there are such influencers. There's you know, but there's nothing there. They just they just doing what they're supposed to be doing. That's it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You are a powerful matriarch. Women need you, Ashe. Thank you, uh, eternal love. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. Okay. And you know, I don't like I, a lot of a lot of times people are not who you think they are and they're not doing what you think they are doing. They're observing what other people are doing. I'll just put it I'll just leave it like that. When you're an observer and you gather knowledge, you gain power. Let me repeat this one more time. Because if y'all haven't seen that Cat Williams interview, he gathered a lot of knowledge after he realized not having enough knowledge left him powerless. So he got, gathered information on people, which gave him his safety and his, his power at that particular time. So when people are around other people, and that's why I would never be in that industry, because you can't really trust people. When you are gathering information from whatever you're observing, that is your that's your power. That's that's how you yield your power in that industry. It's not really about money. Because anybody can get money. It's about what you know and who you know and what they're doing. So sprinkle, sprinkle. And, you know, only one of those people have really been as affiliated with the government. Sparkle, sparkle. That's all I'm going to say. Y'all can, can fill in the blanks. Do your research or just use your brain to think. And if y'all aren't old enough... The ex-president and... You know, Beyonce, Jay Z, um, Obama, Michelle Obama are very close, and they uh, they are friends. So, sprinkle, sprinkle. I haven't watched that Handmaid's Tale. I don't. You know what? What do I think about Diddy? I think whatever he did, I'm sure. If people are telling it, it's going to get told. That's all. That's all I think. <laughs> Whatever he did, if people telling it, it's going to get told. Whatever else happens after that, that's what happened. <laughs> I, I can say this. People, I can say, you can, you can see it in all the interviews of people that have worked with him. That someone were right, so that's all I can say. <laughs> uh, Shira, did you see that we're recently featured on the Shade Room? Yeah, I saw that. That was so cute. I, I shared it in my Instagram story. Mm -hmm. Let's say, okay, so here's the thing this is why I don't like to talk about celebrities and gossip because 
people automatically assume so much things about other people based on an entirely different person. That's why I don't like that's why I don't like getting into the gossip because people that don't really read a lot and do research or know a lot of things will just assume. So for example, just because somebody is friends with somebody or know somebody or is an acquaintance with somebody doesn't mean that they are that person or they do what that person does. It could mean that they're gathering information, observing, getting power over that person, acknowledging what, what's being done and recording it or being a witness to it. It does not mean they are anything. You know what I'm saying? But people want other people to fall so bad for some reason, I don't even know, that they will will those things or those actions on another person and see them guilty before anything and then complain about how, you know, the government treats them as guilty before anything, you know? So I feel like know, know who you're really dealing with before you speak on them. Because if you're if you're highly protected, if you are highly protected, and I'm gonna say that one more time, if you are highly protected, nothing nothing that anyone says against you is gonna is gonna have any type of effect. Nothing. So you know, but I don't understand why people want so. Uh, I don't understand why people want people to fall. When they are the very people that inspired you and changed and paved the way for you to even be recognized as, you know, worthy. That's why I don't like it when people do that. Because when people open so many doors for other people, they are literally unappreciated. And I feel like if you open the door for so many people and then those same type of people or the same generation or this the generation after it that weren't taught or don't know or didn't do their research comes to bring and drag you back down soon and very soon people are going to be like you know what f them i'm just going to go for mine i'm not going to try to change anything i'm not going to try to work make the world better for other people because i see how they treat the people that change things they want to see them fall because they rose too high so when we stop doing that, when we stop telling other people, well, this, this and that and gossiping and trying to bring people down that are literally paving the way for your future and your children's future. A lot of times you have to stop and get your you have to take your jealousy, your envy and your, you know, um, anger out of the situation, whatever it is, and just see try to see the good that's being done. You know, versus how you want to the, the crab in the bucket mentality. Exactly. You got to y'all got to stop doing that because this is why people don't want to be bothered anymore. Uh oh, Renya, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you for staying true to yourself. Speaking fact. Thank you, girl. I, I try. I try every day because people will try to veer you off your path and make you into something that you're not. And I'm like, nope, I ain't doing it. <laughs> But thank you. I appreciate it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So you see, I missed your super chat. Hold on. Let me see. All right. Did I miss a super chat? Okay. I see it. Uh, why do I just want to be ugly and not even try? I'm so exhausted. It is, you know what? Because it's work being a woman, ma'am. It's work being an attractive woman. It's work. This is, and you know what? If you don't put in work, you, you don't have as much power as you could. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You know, if all you have to do is get cute to have power or a certain amount of power and you and you pass it up, that's your free will. If you're tired, stay home. Don't don't post no pictures. Don't go out the house. <laughs> OK. Stay stay in your house. Stay hid. <laughs> um, and OK, so. It is hard. It is hard. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's hard getting up every day to look cute. Got to do your hair, do makeup, especially if you're in a rush to get somewhere. People send me makeup. People send me clothes. People send me stuff, you know, to um, promote. And I know they send in all these 
um, celebrities even more stuff that they have to promote each day. They got to get up no matter what, get dressed, put it on, get paid. Then they can go put on their bathrobe or whatever and chill. But they still got to get up and put on their divinity. They still got to get up and put on inspiration for others. They still got to get up and put on, you know, um, whatever is going to take to take what they're doing to the next level, to the next level. It's not about just them anymore. It's about other people. It's about representing a group at, at some point. Okay. So it's not just an individual thing because it's a whole entire generation, whatever that people represent for. So for example, for my other channel, I used to get mad when I see people out the house with bonnets and, and uh, flip flops and pajamas on because it makes certain people look bad. They, it makes certain people look so bad that they have to put signs on their doors with a bonnet and a little red circle with a line through it. No pajamas, no bonnets. Have you seen those signs? It. We have to do this for ourselves. If you like are the type of person that will leave your house looking like who did it and why, you're misrepresenting people that get up every day and put in effort. It's like you're canceling it out. And so this is why a lot of the level up movement on my other channel is to help people get to the next level faster by, you know, putting energy and effort into themselves, especially as a woman. The divine feminine always has to represent. Back in the old days, in the 50s and the 60s, you could not come out of your house looking like that. You were you would be deemed indecent or crazy, literally indecent or crazy. Somebody would call your mama. If they saw you roaming the streets looking like that, girl, is your, is your child okay? She roaming the streets looking like who did it and why? She on that stuff? But people go out like that willingly now. And that is a sign that you don't care and don't know that you're divine. Sparkle, sparkle. That's why I do what I do. <laughs> like, don't let me, don't let me see y'all doing that. Please. A scarf at least a hat at least they even make hats with wigs attached to them something <laughs> you could do better that's all all right if you want to be treated like divinity look like it act like it walk like it talk like it <laughs> that's why they, I, i'm glad they invented doordash because y'all looking like that, and get it on delivery, ma'am. All right. <laughs> Somebody said throwing a wig with bangs. Mm -hmm. And just think about this, ladies. If we're shifting into the divine feminine era, and you're walking around the streets looking like who did it and why, no one is going to see you as divine. No one's going to want to treat you like you want to be treated. So we treat ourselves like we want to be treated by others. We see ourselves like we want to be seen by others. We present ourselves how we want others to perceive us. Do you want to be perceived as looking like who did it and why? Then don't go out there like that. <laughs> so that's another thing especially if you like if you're reading about mermaids and all this kind of stuff they're always looking good even if it's like a natural beauty they're not looking like toe up from the flow up so no matter what look your best however version your best is whatever version your best is look good man that's how you tap into your divine energy feminine energy look good feel good vibrate good vibrate higher Okay. I mentioned these books earlier and I have them in the link. I'm in the link right here. They should be on my Amazon suggestions, that link. But these are Mermaid, the Myths, Legend, and Lore, the Mermaid, the Mermaid Hidden Book. And there's lots of other books and stuff. I also ordered another book that's coming soon and I'll show y'all that soon. But it helps you tap into your feminine energy, understand div divinity. And then, of course, mermaid, mermaid lore, if you're interested in, in like mythology and stuff like that. It's, it's really interesting and fun. 
So um, I went to the beach this weekend and I bought, ordered these books in order to take and read and just tap into that energy by the ocean. It's very nice. And from doing that, just, I got a lot of inspiration. Um, my awareness increased and I started noticing little things that I wasn't noticing before. And it's so funny because the Airbnb that I stayed in actually had a giant mermaid statue at the door and I had no idea. So it's like, it's all like lined up. It's really nice. I don't really like doing hotels that much. If I can get an Airbnb, especially by, you know, by the beach. Um, we rented this old Victorian house from like 1896 or something like that. And it was a, uh, a, a giant, like huge house that we airbnb would and yeah, it was like decorated like mermaid coastal style. Um, and it's about the same price as a, as a very nice hotel. So I prefer because it's more private and you could do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. You say you're interested in that Southern book about slaying vampires. It's really good. Very descriptive. If you don't like gross things, don't read it. Because the description in that one is gross. The Southern, the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. <laughs> it's very descriptive. I'll say that in a gross way. Oh, Peaches, thank you. Controlling our energy is vital to our self-love. It is. Frankly. Don't give your energy away to people that don't deserve it. That's another thing. And for men too, like men, if you're looking for a divine feminine woman that you can, you know, honor, bring into your life, you know, date, whatever, don't go for women who don't know who they are. I'm going to repeat that. Don't go for women who don't love themselves, who seek validation everywhere but within and who don't know who they really are. Because if they don't know who they are, they do, if they don't know they're divine, they're constantly, constantly going to have issues searching for themselves until they find themselves. And a man can't tell you who you are. The best way for a woman to find out who she is is to know it from within and to only deal with men who treat her as such. Okay? Uh oh Magdalena, thank you for your work. She says, stay authentic. Yeah. So if you're, if you're, if you don't intend to treat a woman right in a relationship or improve her life in any way or show her that she's divine or treat her as if she's divine, you're just going to make her worse. <laughs> and when, and, and the thing is when she finds out her own divinity, she's not going to want to deal with you anymore. So definitely don't, Enter a woman's life unless you are re ready to recognize her divinity. Uh oh, Serafina, joy. Yes, you give me life. It's so good to see you and hear you on this channel. I have ordered Siren Splash and Phase One Elixir to step my uh, into your divinity. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. What do I think about immortality? Um, water, sprinkle, sprinkle. Water is immortal. There you go. Water makes up 70% of you or more. Water makes up more than 75% of the earth. Without water, there is no life. So what do I think about immortality? Water. Okay. Is anything possible? What do you think about immortality? Yeah, water. Just study water, ma'am. Okay. The cycle of water. You said you missed my decoding. I was decoding earlier and just watched the rewatch the video. But I don't really like I don't really go into death because I feel like Depending on your frequency, your perspective, and where you are in your life, you're going to see different things and decode and see different things. So um, I feel like I can look at it from, you know, a general perspective and just read the obvious. 
But when you are looking for something like more personal and detailed to you specifically, you're going to see things on a deeper level. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which, okay. Yeah. Phase one, baby. The end of elixirs. It says it on there. What? That's true. We're like computers and we process information differently. Exactly. It's like art. You're going to, you're going to see it different. Everyone has their own interpretation of art. And then if you ask the artist, they have a totally different thing than what most people probably came up with, but it's what it means to you. It's the message for you. It's like what it means for you. Okay. What about manifesting physical changes or about manifesting anything else? Um, create the life you want by seeing yourself there already, by planning for it and preparing for it. Okay. That's how I would do it. Prepare for it. What do you need to manifest money? Um, I always say manifest waste for money to come to you in several directions, not just money, because you can find a penny on the floor and there your manifestation is true. Manifest ways to allow money to flow to you in many directions constantly and increasingly. Use your words and your manifestation and visualize the different streams and methods that it can come because money is a penny. You find a money, you, you manifest money, you do this money spell, you manifest money. And then all you find is a penny. You better, you better think bigger, you better think like the ocean. <laughs> all right. You, better, you, okay. You want a penny or you want some wealth? How can we use the upcoming eclipse for manifesting? Manifest your divine feminine energy being recognized, honored, and gifted. That's what I'm doing. All right. Mm -hmm. Think bigger. Y'all think it too small. And like, honestly, money. That doesn't mean anything but one penny. Wealth, abundance, increasing abundance from several directions is only going to grow. That's what you want. Limitless. You want to you want to think limitless. Okay. Um, but this is okay. Like abundance, limitlessness, eternity. This all feminine energy. Tap into your feminine energy and it'll be easier for you to think on a grander scale. How do you restore your energy when bad events happen in life? By creating good events. Okay, you are a creator. You're not, you're not what happens to you. You, what, you are a creator. So if something happens to you, then you happen to, to whatever future that you want to create. So create something great. Do something that you want to see. Do something you want to like. Do something that you're excited about, you know? Like sometimes when people get down and out, they start drinking or smoking or getting depressed. Do something constructive. Do something that's going to make you money. Come up with ideas with stuff that you can create and, and you know, get paid from. Instead, use that energy to propel yourself in, in, instead of, you know, make yourself worse. Use creative energy, which is feminine energy, creative energy to push you to a higher level versus feeling sorry for yourself or looking at the past and not seeing your present or your future. Oh, metaverse, sprinkle, sprinkle, ways to channel Lilith. Read, read about her and see why she was mad. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And then understand like she probably was one of the first feminists Biblically or religious, 
why she was the first feminist. And of course, what do they do to the first feminist? Demonize her. <laughs> so just read about her in the positive way. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. You said you went to your mom's house and brother's house and you could feel the energy drain. And she says, why don't I come home? And my brother tried to start a fight with me. What is your advice? Invite her out without your brother. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Say, let's meet for tea. Let's meet for dinner. Don't bring that brother. <laughs> and then tell her, it's like, he always trying to start some. It's like he's jealous or something. So, just tell her straight up, let's meet out for dinner or meet out for tea or whatever, because I don't want to be dealing with that. What's your thoughts on numerology? Um, if that's how you want to see things or interpret things, it's just a method. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Kind of like a way to divine. Mm hmm. You said when you start to level up and love yourself, this man keeps coming back and it's so wild, but I feel beautiful. We really are what we feel about ourselves. Yeah. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, so, you know, if you don't want to live under the patriarchy like Lilith didn't, she left. And said, forget, forget y'all. <laughs> Basically. I'm do what I want. But see, we don't live in those times anymore. We don't live in the era anymore where the laws don't allow you to own property. We don't live in the era anymore where you need to walk down the street with a man in order to be out in public unless you're in a different country. That still does that. We don't live in that era anymore. So a lot of the old religion and things like that don't apply anymore because it's outdated. A lot of that stuff is outdated because those laws no longer exist. Okay. We no longer have to keep property in our families by marrying as a child bride in order to um, have our house owned by a male in order to keep it in our family. We don't have to do that anymore. That's old school, old days. Now we can do what we want. So times have changed, laws have changed, but you still have the same old religion that is patriarchal and sees you as a lesser being when you are a goddess and the being that everything came from. So this is why I'm saying a lot of these male dominated religions are outdated and people are still following them and expecting to get different results and they're not. You don't need to marry off your 12-year-old child in order to keep your house. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh-oh. Funa, yes. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You don't have to have an arranged marriage anymore as a favor because such and such loaned your family money because the mom or the dad died and the mom couldn't, you know, go out and work because people don't hire women. This is not that era anymore. So we don't follow those rules anymore. Uh oh, Ashley, thinking of business ideas, what do you think about selling rhinestones, pins on Etsy? Your boyfriend says bad idea, but he's giving me extra money. Um, It depends on, you said, I think it's cute, but this, is it gonna hurt people's fingers to write? Is it where the hand part is? But I mean, I'd have to see one because a lot of people like shiny stuff. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't think it's a bad idea. I think it's all about advertisement. Okay. It's about advertising, man. It's a, it's a bad idea if you don't advertise. Okay. Okay. Whatever you all use to divine, use it to divine. I don't, it doesn't matter what I think of it. 
you like it, then you like it. So yeah, we don't live in that era no more. Don't follow those rules anymore. Follow your own rules. Make your own rules. Just like you make a, you know, make everything else. Make your own stuff. How do you transmute energy? Take what is bad and convert it into something good. Okay. It's the same way people make money off of the bad situation. Okay. You see there's getting ready to be a bad season. You Okay. Uh, and you investing in certain stocks, invest in stocks that have to do with people preparing or invest. Like you see a bunch of houses on the market that's, you know, being up for sale, invest in something that like for uh, home renovations, stuff like that. So you just look at what's happening and then you find the solution for it. That's literally it. And then you invest in it. That's a way to out to uh, transmute something. Or let's say if somebody's mad at you, and you don't and you don't want to be in that situation just ignore it and go do what you want and take your time as your free time and deal with them when they want to be dealt with uh, let's see i'm trying to read you said i missed something Okay. I don't think I missed anything. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. I don't see anything I missed. Do I like living in Texas? This is all, the only place I've ever lived. Okay. All Texans like living in Texas, mostly. <laughs> What do I think about fillers? Don't get them. If you if you gain weight and lose weight, because like look, look look at me, I don't get fillers. I just gain weight when I need to look full. All right, sprinkle sprinkle. It's called it's eating. Eat and then you don't have to get no filler. Oh, Tess, sprinkle sprinkle. Y'all be y'all be sitting over there starving yourselves and y'all face be drooping. Just go eat. All right. Um, if your face is still drooping after you ate, then you might need some. I feel like if you're really old and you want to feel and look young again and fillers are the only way, then go get it. That's what it's there for. But if you don't really need them, don't don't get them if you don't need them. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Do I think plant going plant based is part of the shift? Um, I feel like honestly, it allows you to have more energy and vibrate on a certain frequency and allows your digestive systems to work faster. So whatever that means to you, if you do, if you know science, you'll understand, you know what I'm saying? Especially with uh, solar flares, radiation, pollution, fake diseases that are created, you know, um, your immune system is mostly in your gut. So if you want to heighten your immune system fast, take meat out of it and dairy. That's it, literally. You want a higher immune system? Take out meat and dairy. You want a stronger immune system? Take out meat and dairy and you'll be fine. It doesn't mean you have to do it permanently. Just if that's what you're trying to build, your immunity, then take it out. Meat and dairy. Yeah. All right. Your question was regarding the eclipse. Would you share your practice state? I don't really practice anything. I'm not, it, none of that stuff matters. All of that is fear based and fear mongering. All it is is the sign of the moon going over the sun, the feminine going over the masculine. That's literally it. The, the shift to the divine feminine era. 
the, the moon covers the sun. There you go. Um, would I let my Harvard's my daughters go to Harvard Ivy League if somebody paid for it? <laughs> sparkle, sparkle. If they had a scholarship or somebody paid for it, because I'm not getting ready to pay for that. Right? How am I staying energized? I sleep, drink water, do what I want. Yeah. So you get a fake certificate from Harvard, a fake diploma. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, I fall asleep very easily. I just go lay down and I'm asleep. Why do you think CERN is being used during the eclipse? Probably as an experiment. Try to see what, if it makes a difference. <laughs> we'll see what this gonna do you know if you had a CERN machine and there was a rare eclipse you'd be trying to use it too see what's gonna happen <laughs> see what kind of shifts gonna happen you, you're trying to shift something to your favor So Alchemist mentioned that meat is what dims the light from transmuting the soul from lead to gold. Yes, sprinkle, sprinkle. Now, okay, so here's the thing about a lot of people that I don't I don't care about diets. I don't care if you're a meat eater or I don't care if you're a vegan or a vegetarian or a pescatarian. I don't care. I don't care. I literally don't care. Whatever you put in your mouth and poop out, I really don't care. I'm just saying the scientific facts of what this does and what it, you know, uh, helps with. That's all I'm saying. Oh, Norma, sparkle, sparkle. Thank you. <laughs> that meat dulls the wit. Yeah. Because your body is so focused on and all the energy is put towards digesting it. It also pre-ages you. Okay. What do I think about the mark of the beast? What is the mark of the beast? Well, first of all, what's the beast? That's what you got to like the mark of the beast. But what's the beast? A beast in the field. That could be a cow. That could be meat. That could be an animal. It could be a dulled wit, as you say. The human body. A lot of people have a different interpretation of what it is. What are practices to connect your to your divine feminine? Look good, feel good, ma'am. Look like the divine feminine. That's part of it. No one's going to believe you are divine if you don't look the part. Think about all the most memorable women or most women that are connected to divinity. You know, they got to look the part. That's very important. Appearance is very important. I don't care what nobody tells you. You and our people know that. Appearance is number one. Then when you, because uh, when you look good, you feel good and you believe in your divinity more than you would if you were walking around looking like who did it and why. Think about like in mythology and how they represent the Orisha and like all the goddesses are pretty. They all look good, right? They don't have, you know, they all are representing divinity so that's that's what you have to emulate mm -hmm. makeup and wigs don't make you divine but they are what a lot of the ancient um egyptians and uh people from kemet war to emulate the divine goddesses and gods or the divine uh 
aspects of their religion. They all wore makeup, they wore wigs to feel more divine and closer to the goddess. Yes, they did. Sprinkle, sprinkle. They wore perfumed oils. They used incense, ouds to perfume their clothing so that when they walked, they would smell divine. They would look divine. They Everything was about divinity during that era. The closer you looked and felt and smelt like the divine, the closer you were and the higher you were respected. That's just how it is today, except people want to say, okay, well, it doesn't take all of that. You don't have to look like that every day. But when you leave your house, when you're presenting yourself to the public, if you want to be perceived as a divine feminine goddess, then you need to look the part. That's just it. If you're on an off day and you don't want to be perceived as nothing, you just want to go undercover, go put, your, put your hoodie on and don't be seen. Don't take no pictures. Get in and get out, you know. But if you're trying to make waves in this world, if you're trying to represent, if you're trying to live in your divine feminine energy, then make sure that's what you're doing. Same for men. The same for men. If you want to be respected as a man, as a divine man, don't come out the house with your draw showing. Don't come out looking like who did it and why. Don't come out looking like whatever. Put some clothes on and look decent. That's literally it. Okay. Look like you want to be treated. That's all I'm going to say. Um, before they do a sacrifice, like a major disaster, do they throw a hint? Yeah, I just throwed y'all the hints in the beginning of this video. If you live near the Gulf Coast, if you live near the coast, bad hurricane season. If you, um, solar flares coming. Uh, get your immune system up because who knows what else? Sparkle, sparkle. There you go. That's but that's what it always is. So stay away from fake people. There you go. How exactly can one build their confidence? Look good, feel good. It goes hand in hand. Look good, feel good. You can't tell me if someone gave you a beautiful dress, did your hair and makeup, or you were just like totally made over and looking really good. And you can't tell me that's not going to boost your self-esteem. If you do that to yourself every day and walk around like, you know, the divine goddess that you are, it's only a matter of time before your self-esteem and your self-confidence is going to keep rising. And, you know, so look good, feel good, literally. And also know who you are. Know that you're divine. Don't let anyone make you feel any less. Correct them or dismiss them. Oh, Shade. Two unrelated questions. Do you need to practice witchcraft to understand alchemy? No. Why do people scream and move on contra lullaby during exorcism? Um uncontrollably okay during exorcism because they're under the um they're under the assumption that there's something wrong with them and in order to remove whatever is wrong with them subconsciously then they have to um allow whatever that is to be removed and so it's a form of um hypnosis when the exorcist is performing the rituals it's a form of hypnosis to allow the person to think that whatever's wrong with them is getting ready to be removed. And, you know, as humans, we store things subconsciously in our mind and we can't let certain things go. So it's a struggle to let certain things go sometimes. So that's why it, there's a fight. You know what I'm saying? Some people don't realize that and they suppress it. So, and the, you know, it intertwines with their religion and their spiritual beliefs all intertwine in their subconscious, you know, mind that it has to be removed the same way. You know what I'm saying? Um, so that's why. And you don't have to practice witchcraft to understand alchemy. Witchcraft is literally wise craft. Um, most people um, did this 
to help the same thing. It's like an exorcism. If it's mental, um, then it can be unblocked mentally, which is subconsciously. Witchcraft is mostly subconscious. Uh, if you practice herbal witchcraft, then that's medicine and that's alchemy, which is chemistry, um, medicine and all that stuff. So it's all the same thing. Literally, it's all the same thing. You practice whatever you're practicing. You blow out a candle on a cake. You just did witchcraft. You put makeup on your face. You just you just did witchcraft. You tell somebody something that's not true in order to gain something, um, you know, spiritually or subconsciously. Um, hypnosis is witchcraft. So everything you literally technology is witchcraft. This computer screen is witchcraft. So everything you do is literally witchcraft according to what people say witchcraft is. It's just what people don't understand that they label. So I really feel like people don't people have labeled stuff so um so much that they don't even realize that it doesn't even need a label anymore. <laughs> okay. Nothing needs a label. You said ancients did where we oh my gosh. So you think the ancient Egyptians that was their real hair? They got wigs in the museum. Visit one. Someone said the ancients didn't wear wigs. Did you forget about Egypt? They had makeup and wigs and jewelry. The heck? Where you been? <laughs> anyway. You get off of TikTok and go read a book. Okay. So I was doing witchcraft on my viewers. Why would I do witchcraft on my viewers? They, unless they paid me to. No. I ain't doing nothing for free. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all know that. <laughs> Y'all should know be real enough by now. I ain't, I ain't wasting no supplies, no material, unless I'm being paid. Yeah, Y'all pay me to do witchcraft. I, I used to. Yes, for y'all. I have lots of people with testimonials. <laughs> but I'm not getting ready to do nothing for free. That's Pygmisha. Or Barbara the Builder. That's not me. Okay. We're... <laughs> Okay, yes. When well, you know your value, you don't do nothing for free. You ain't getting nothing in exchange for it. You ain't going to do that. What made you stop? Um, I got really busy. I got more subscribers. I got, you know, all of that. And I couldn't keep up with all I did. Imagine this. You say, okay, I, I, I do witchcraft. I do spells for people. And 20 people, 20 a day, not just 10, not just five, 20 people or more a day are in your DMs paying you before you even say yes. Okay. Can you do a spell for me? Can you do a reading for me? Can you do this? I, I would wake up and have thousands of dollars in my account before I said yes to any of this stuff. Which means I got to do it. Okay. And I ain't got time to do all of that. I ain't got time. So I found another way to make money. That required less hands-on effort and energy. Um, but yes, it, was, it became too much. Okay. It became way too much. It was a good problem. I ain't complaining. But, you know, I got a lot of money off of that. But it was way too many people for me, one little old me, one person to do. So I just stopped doing it altogether. And plus, a lot of people were asking for pick Misha stuff, and I was just done. Begging for some man that don't want him to come back. I'm like, girl, how many times do you have to realize this, that he ain't coming back, ma'am? Unless his other girlfriend kick him out and he needs some shelter. Like That is also what helped me propel me to give so much advice on my other channel. I've heard so many of y'all's problems through this channel about all y'all's dusties, all y'all's dudes that have left, uh, y'all high and dry. I have heard so many stories. I've done so many spells for people that try to get their baby daddy to marry them, to get the woman to leave their man alone, to keep her from cheating, all this kind of stuff. And you know what? 
if you if you don't change as a divine feminine woman and know your worth, all men are going to treat you like that. How can you manifest a sugar daddy within a week? Go out every day in the rich area of town and look good. Sprunk, sprinkle. A wild manifesting. Uh oh, God, it's energy. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So, yeah, I used to make a lot of money on that, but it became too much work. So, I had to find a different way to make that money. So, so for example, Think about this, y'all. If I were to offer, sorry, y'all, click someone. If I were to offer myself to do spells or readings again, do you know how booked I would be? Literally. Do you know how many people would ask me or pay me? I'd, I'd buy a whole house. So, a whole other house. It's just too much. Sometimes, like, sometimes you have to turn down certain things. Unless you charge an insane amount and then people will be like, well, why is your spell work so much when this chick over here is only $30? So instead of dealing with all of that, the hassle, I just say, learn how to do it y'all I got spells on my spell playlist and y'all can do the stuff yourselves. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You got a reading back in 2016? Yes. So that's why I stopped doing it because there's too many people and there was not enough time. But I appreciate all y'all who got it. Okay. You said all my spells work that you had done, Marisa, Maricia. Thank you, girl. Shout out. You said you're not paying $60 at the door. To no club just to hear, get it sexy all night. Girl, I don't blame you. Go to the rich area of town, not to the club. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Clearly just a broken woman. Clearly just a broke man. That can't even get a broken woman. To give you no time of day. Anyway, the shift... Y'all, there's a there's a, a dust demon in here. Get your spray, get your holy water. Get your pledge and your dust feather dusters. The dust demon up in the uh oh jazz. Sprinkle, sprinkle, love your video. Sure. Thank you, girl. Dust demon on the loose. <laughs> get my Get out. Go bother your mother. Anyway. Um, 2000s music was way better. Yes. That's what I'm calling them from now on. Not even Dusty. They, they didn't graduate to Dust Demons. Anyway, so yes, if y'all are looking to get into like the spiritual, you know, business as far as doing readings and spells and stuff, then you need to know your stuff and you have to have a lot of patience. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, you said block this guy. Block the dust demon? Then what he gonna go do? Uh oh, Goddess Wired, thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Goddess Wired. She's been a member for 16 months. Thank you. Thanks to all the members. All right. Girl, the dust demon don't know nothing but what an air mattress look like. He don't know mattresses. Go get you some duct tape and patch up your dust demon air mattress over there, Dusty. Anyway. Uh, you said patience is a saint. You're about to raise your prices soon. Good. Give yourself a raise, ma'am. 
Okay. Ari, Ari. Hey, Shira, love you lots. You've been watching since you were 19 and you're 24 now. Oh, my goodness. What do you think you could possibly do to find your life out and happiness? Find my life out and happiness. Okay. First of all, just live each day and create the life you actually want. Happiness comes from within. So get, get a journal or whatever and write down what the things you want to do. Write down what you want your life to be like in five years from now. Uh, you know how they have vision boards? Make a for manifesting, do a manifestation journal. Cut out places you want to go or write down places you want to go and write down stuff like that and then check it off when you do it. You know, create your own life. Don't sit there and wonder where your happiness is when it comes from within. Don't sit there and wonder what you're supposed to be doing with your life when you're supposed to be cre creating your life. Okay. How to deal with religious parents if their manifestations to do spells, especially when they follow religious leaders, Lavender. Separate yourself from anyone who will choose a religious religion over their own blood, sprinkle, sprinkle. And when they realize what they've done, either they'll accept you or they'll continue to stay brainwashed. Um, you can respectfully do this by distancing yourself and not participating in religious activities. And possibly saying that you're exploring another religion instead. That's not really bad. You can just lie. So basically it's like, oh, you know what? I'm exploring, you know, spirituality versus religion. And I just kind of want to take a break from it. So distance yourself slowly from the religion. And um, if the parents are mad about that, about what you're doing, just say, you know what? I was forced into it. I didn't have a choice. And I don't think that's right. I just don't believe it. <laughs> and then remind them of a good childhood memory or something that they did nice for you. Because they literally think it's an attack against them. But when you remind them that, you know, you're good parents, I love you, we had, you know, da da da, they're more likely to accept you versus taking it personal because it's not even their religion it was something they were forced into as well so i would literally just be like yeah i'm exploring other options right now but i really y'all are really good parents i really appreciate everything you've done for me blah, 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 blah. and just you know I'm, I'm taking a break just say you're taking a break that means it's not permanent so they'll just leave you alone you know what i'm saying and just take a permanent break from religion You don't have to worry about any of it. Do you have to have a mentor? You don't have to have nothing but a candle to practice candle work and something to light it with, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Who mentored the first mentor? You don't need none of that. You just need your own mind and your own ability to learn and practice whatever you choose to practice. You said, how do I declare a break from my pastor, though? What do you mean, a break from your pastor? Just don't go to church. Get a job that makes you work on Sunday, ma'am. I don't know. Get a fake part-time job that doesn't exist that makes you work on Sunday. <laughs> oh, I got a part-time job, and I got to work Sunday. Then go to the mall. Anyway. That's what I would do. Are you old enough to work? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, AA. Don't don't say you're working at Chick Fil A though, because they're gonna clock. They're gonna they're gonna figure it out. <laughs> How to remain detached and relaxed while getting things done? Focus on what you're doing instead of other things. That's how. Would I use a veil when you do spells or meditate? Um, it depends on what I was doing. Okay, but you know, if you, it depends on what you do, like you could just have a, a veil forever of, of what you're doing, so a protection veil, whatever, forever. 
from the start to the finish. <laughs> Okay. Is manifesting your ne next life possible? I mean, is does water manifest its next life? Does water manifest well it where it will be um poured into next? So here's my thing. The atmosphere creates, you know, steam, the water precipitation, the whole water cycle. It doesn't know where it's going to become rain, what ocean it's going to go into, if it's going to go into a lake, depends on, you know, where the cloud moves over, da, 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 da. It's just water. It's going to eventually go to every life, to every lake, to every stream. You're going to get to go. If you believe in reincarnation, like you believe in water, 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 the water you're drinking today has been around since the beginning of time. There you go. Water is like literally reincarnation. It flows to the path of least resistance. Okay. You sign up for career job for the money. You feel like it's too much responsibility. You want to do something part-time, but you will have to take a huge pay cut. I feel like my boyfriend was mean and always saying he didn't have any money. I'm working. He's nicer. Okay. Of course he's nicer because he has a 50-50 person. Of course you're, because you're paying and you're not supposed to be paying if you live with a grown man. Honestly, if you don't like it, it's taking you out of your feminine energy. Then you need to find a man who doesn't need you to work. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh oh, Mia, sprinkle, sprinkle. Is it normal to go through phases of wanting to gather a lot of spiritual info at once, then taking a break? Yeah. You learn, then you process, then you put the knowledge to use. And then once you feel like you're ready to learn more, then you go back and learn more. But I'm not getting ready to be no grown man that's asking me for some money. Mm -mm. Anyway, I'm too divine for that. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care if he's happy or are you happy? He'll be happy when he can afford to uh, have a girlfriend or have a wife and pay for it. He'll be happier. All right. Mm -hmm. You can get a new man easy. Every time you go out the house, somebody coming on to you. If you go into the rich area, uh, it's only a matter of time and it's a numbers game. You want a man with money. It's that simple. Y'all make it harder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you know you're divine, it's not that hard. Because you'll attract easily, easier. You said when I wasn't working, he said he didn't have money. I'm not dealing with nobody who who's lives in lack. Like if, if the words that come out of a man's mouth is I don't have money, then he don't have me. All right. I'm not getting ready to listen to no BS. Where's my tithes and offerings, sir? There goes the door. Now we don't deal with broke men. Sorry. New boyfriend time. Okay, I'm not dealing with it. I'm sorry. I... There's bigger problems in the world than to pile dating a broke man on top of it. Why would you do that to yourself? Yes, don't do it. <laughs> I would never do that to myself. I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> Remember. How you treat yourself is how you teach others to treat you. If you if you tell a grown man that it's okay to be broke and still have you, he's gonna continue to be broke. That's y'all are teaching them not. Y'all are teaching them how to treat you. So I'm not getting ready to go get into that. Y'all y'all understand. 
Mm-hmm. He pays all my bills though, and I'm scared he'll be mean if I'm working for less money and have to add. Then you don't need to be with him, ma'am. Go get another one. Cheat on him. Sparkle, sparkle. Go get one with more money who's not going to be mean. What are you doing? You get him, you can get another one. Honestly, I'm not worrying about no grown man who's asking me for money. That's not a man to me. And I would see him as less and I wouldn't deal with him. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would be disgusted and he couldn't even touch me. I Honestly. Okay. Girl, why are you working? Go find you a, a work husband. Why are you at work eight hours a day plus? Girl, get you a good old work husband. Date the boss. Do something. You can find somebody on your lunch break and replace. All right. <laughs> I'm not getting ready to deal with the brokenness, okay? The divine feminine is all about abundance, not brokenness. So if your man broke, get away from him, girl. What you doing? If he's paying all the bills and still wants you to work and he's not going to give you money, then he don't even love you. What? The, what? And he doesn't like you way more than you like him. So why are you even with him? That's, that's weird. I'm not getting ready to be with no man that don't like me way more and that's paying for everything. I can't do it. I'm too divine for that. Like, <laughs> I literally am too divine for that. I can't. You can be that divine too if you just stop accepting it. Okay. All right. What shadow work should we be doing during the eclipse on Monday? Feminine energy power. Wealth, abundance, feminine energy. Water magic is good because the moon is covering the sun. Uh, anything that is good bringing you wealth or feminine energy. Feminine divine power. Have I decoded the dollar bill? Probably in one of my videos a long time ago. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't even carry cash anymore. This is <laughs> it's dirty. Okay. How would you manifest abundance if you just got a new job after hitting rock bottom and my level up? Better? Um, Manifest a man so you don't have to work no more or so you can start your own business. I would manifest a sugar daddy, literally. <laughs> you know what? Because if you depend on one stream of income and one job and you lose it, you're going to hit rock bottom again and again and again. I would work on getting several streams of income or several men that give you money. That way you can start your own business with the money that they're giving you. You can save, you can invest, you can do whatever you need to do. You need to find several streams of income so you don't continuously start to hit rock bottom every time you lose a job. You know what I'm saying? Because if, if all it takes for you to hit rock bottom is for you to lose your job, then that's another possibility. I'm making sure I don't hit rock bottom by layering my streams of income. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Manifest more streams of income. Manifest men with money. Manifest more, not just one stream. Y'all be begging for a live on this channel. Please stop bringing up y'all dusties. Okay, that's right, Shador. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah, you know, manifestation is all about how you treat yourself too. Like, for example, and how you think. How people manifest is a reflection of how they think. Where is the state of your mind? You ever notice that people that have a lot of money already can manifest better than people that don't have a lot of money? I'm going to tell you why. Because they don't think in lack. They think in abundance. They don't think small. They think big. So if you want to manifest majorly, you got to think bigger, not small. Don't think where you are. Think where you want to be. Okay. 
That's it. Don't think about where you are. Don't don't manifest out of lack. Manifest when you have everything you want or when you are feeling abundant. That's when you manifest because that frequency that you're using while you're manifesting, if it's out of desperation and lack, that's what you're going to be vibrating. So when you have a good job, when you when it's payday, when you cash your check or deposit your check and you're feeling like large, that's when you manifest, when you are feeling rich, when you are feeling abundant, not when you're feeling lack. So and that's the difference between like some people that rush to practice witchcraft out of desperation or lack. And instead of it's the same thing as people going to pray to God when they need something versus just saying, OK, well. Uh, having gratitude and stuff like that towards their religion or their God or whatever. It's the same thing. So, oh, now you come and pray when you need something. I roll, you know. It's the same thing when you rush to witchcraft because something went wrong. When you rush to spirituality or when you rush to manifest something out of lack. You need to be manifesting when you are up, when you are doing your best. OK. Don't be manifesting when you at your lowest point and worst point. Take advantage of it when you are at your best or when you're feeling abundant. If you if you can't do it, then dress up. And feel abundant with whatever you're putting on, dress up, look good, put on your most expensive outfit, get your most expensive jewelry, put that on, go walk around a nice area of town and manifest. If you can't get into the feeling of it because you're in such lack. You manifested winning thirty five hundred dollars for your business with you inspiring me since 2019. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Pretty princess. Santa, thank you, girl. I appreciate you. Any but seeing the lessons. Out of every bad situation. Yeah. It, learning and never to repeat something that you don't want to repeat or learning how to make something better. Uh oh, Lamerica, sprinkle, sprinkle. Any books you recommend for water magic? Yes, there's a link. I'll put it again. Just go look at this link and there's a lot of books and stuff. It's on Amazon. So. Oh, Vic, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you for never switching up on your message and always keeping it real. No matter what anyone says, your videos are comforting. Thank you. Thank you, girl. I appreciate that. Big sprinkle, sprinkle. Yes, you know it's it's kind of weird because a lot of people um, on my other channel, they're like, you know, they don't know about this channel, and if they find out about it, they're like, oh my gosh, this is this thing. This channel been here for ten years too. It's not new, and I will always stay true to my messages if that's what I feel like I need to do. I don't feel like I need to change for other people because I'm the change. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> uh oh, you said trash panda. Your name is trash panda. Oh, it's cute. Little raccoon. Okay, you believe manifestation requires consistency. Do you advise those struggling with self discipline? It doesn't. You manifest once, you good, man. You just use the right words. Program yourself to continue doing what. Is going to lead you towards whatever you're manifesting. So you don't really need self-discipline. What you need is whatever you're manifesting. Is that's that's what you got to really want. You know. So for example, if you're manifesting, I don't know what you're manifesting. If you're manifesting uh, abundance, then don't think in lack. Whenever you start thinking, you need to discipline your mind, not. The mind is first. So whenever there's a negative thought or a doubt, switch it into a positive one. So, for example, if you say, oh, that manifestation is not working, then it's going to stop working because that's what you see it. Or you could say, oh, you know what? I I'm planning on doing this, this and that when my manifestation comes through. And then, then visualize it. So discipline your thoughts and how you speak about whatever it is you're doing. That's the easiest part. Mm-hmm. You say everyone dealing with a Jezebel spirit? 
needs to seek Jesus and allow him to. Okay, everyone who's dealing with a strong feminine energy needs to seek a, a, a man and ask for forgiveness. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's what he's saying. All right. Anyone dealing with a strong feminine energy needs to go out and seek a man and ask him to forgive you. Y'all hear that? Go ahead. Go bow down. <laughs> Make sure he's giving you some money if you're doing all of that, though. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, he said she's going to hell. Who? So I own it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm going to make you pay extra rent when you get down. Anyway. <clears throat> don't let these guys intimidate goddesses y'all came from us okay we don't need to seek we don't need to seek nobody but the only only man we seek is the man on them dollar bills and the man who can give us the man on them dollar bills sprinkle sprinkle y'all put Jesus on a dollar bill all women will be seeking Jesus I promise and the reason why I'm saying this is because whenever a man is faced with not being masculine enough, not being abundant enough, not being able to provide, he always want to go to spirituality. He always want to go to Jesus. He always want to go to uh, the spiritual because it doesn't require a material. And, but you're on the material plane, fool. So go get some money and shut up. If you're so spiritual, manifest you a good job, manifest you some money, manifest you a business, manifest you a woman that you can afford, <laughs> manifest you some business, get a new wig, one coming in the mail, got one right here, send me so many wigs, I can't even wear them all. Shout out to Lux Couture. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I got wigs that haven't even been worn. Look, this one got pink in it. I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and sit and get my Nage concert. I got new everything. <laughs> you want one, sir? Do uh, you want me to send you a wig? Is you a weaveologist and a wigologist? know so much about hair you want a wig too <laughs> a female culture has to be manipulative towards men that's how we roll sprinkle sprinkle because when we ask y'all to do something y'all act like y'all don't want to do it or y'all don't hear nothing so manipulation is the way sprinkle sprinkle When we smarter than y'all, y'all act like something is wrong with us, calling us witches and whatnot. So manipulation is the way. When you can't get out of your own way as a man to see the divine feminine energy, we're going to manipulate it. We're going to make it do what it do. Water it fl flows in the path of least resistance. And if that's what manipulation is, that's what it's going to be. <laughs> Don't get mad there's that's there's no way around it it is what it is and you know if the the more you fight against it you're just fighting against water you're just gonna wear yourself out it don't work this is gonna wear yourself out <laughs> swimming in the ocean fighting against the current you're just gonna wear yourself out you can't do it might as well go with the flow <laughs> Might as well go with the flow. Okay. What do you think of invoking a spirit or goddess for strength? You're already strong. You're already a goddess. But the aspects that you learn and the characteristics that you learn from whatever particular goddess that you're drawn to, you can tap into those energies more or that those traits or those characteristics more by learning. Yes. 
You said Jezebel's spirit is a woman knowing her power. Exactly. They always want to demonize women who are smarter and more e efficient. That's okay. <laughs> we'll flip it and transmute that into goddess energy. All right. We said, why do they associate Jezebel's spirit with narcissism? Because you can't control a woman who knows her divinity and her power. And so they feel like, oh, you're narcissistic because you won't listen and I can't control you. I mean, if you have some money, we'll act. We'll act. If you're a provider, if you're a man providing, we'll act a certain way in front of your friends or whatnot. <laughs> but no. How will you handle when you're out with an older guy? This wrong channel, but hold on. And he says that girls have big butt. How will you handle? I don't care. Yes, you do got a big booty. I'll agree with him if it's big, spring, spring. I don't care. What he's supposed to do, not see a big booty? It, honestly, it wouldn't bother me. I don't really care because I'm going to be looking at men's cars that drive by that's nicer than he is. All right. Oh, you see that Lambo? I'm going to say the same thing, but it's going to be material, not no booty. Um, It doesn't bother me. Like I, I'm not jealous of any any other woman. Um, I really don't care about stuff like that. Okay. <laughs> I guess if it's you're just starting to date someone, that would be a little bit awkward. But I would think it was a joke. I'll be like, yeah, she do got a big booty. Look at that. You think it's real? Sparkle, sparkle. I mean, it wouldn't bother me at all. I don't care you looking at somebody's booty. If it's, they put implants in it, it's big and it's jiggling, everybody's going to look at it. What he's supposed to do? Look up at the sky? <laughs> so, no, I really wouldn't care. <laughs> um, hey. Say Q in the chat. Hey, Q, sparkle, sparkle. Anyway, you said my son, you said your son had sleep paralysis and a woman whispered in his ear. Is he becoming clear audience? Um, I feel like we all are to an extent. And when you're in that state of sleep paralysis, you're in a state of panic. And so perhaps some uh, energy or feminine, divine feminine energy wanted to comfort him in some manner, uh, like a motherly comforting, you know, it's going to be okay type of thing. But um, I think Claire audience are, yeah, I think a lot of people experience that in the waking between like sleeping and waking a lot, because I know I do especially when I was younger, but yeah. Uh, you said Jesus was trying to deliver you from witchcraft. It was hell and back, but I testify he was, girl, sir. Oh, sir. Um, honestly, witchcraft predates Jesus. So I'm glad he delivered you to something that's older than him that he's based off of. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I share it with your loins. Just bring me my coins. <laughs> Vibrant thing. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's the equivalent to, say, to saying something like, you know what? 
technology took over, no, dinosaurs took over in the Jurassic, before the draft, with the crustaceous era. And so I prayed to technology to save me. Wrong era, wrong time, wrong dinosaurs, if they're real, predate the technology. Unless you believe in conspiracy theories. <laughs> yeah, if you don't believe in witchcraft, don't believe in it. If you believe in Jesus, go worship Jesus. I don't really care. I don't discriminate over here. All the metaphors, all the symbolisms are exactly the same. They all worship a goddess. So I really don't care what you believe in. All religions and spiritualities literally go back to the goddess and there is no escape. That's why I say you can't escape the matrix because every spirituality you go into, whatever religious you go, whatever religion you go to, whatever deity you go to, the symbols, the numerology, the cyclic events of the heavens and the earth and the ocean will always go back to the divine feminine or to the mother. So you can pray to whoever you need to pray to. It's all going to go back to the mother anyway, because Jesus came out of Mary. So, hail Mary, come with me. Do you want to ride or die? La, da, da, da. That's a good song, Tupac. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. Yeah, Q Reeves in the house. What's up? It's been a while. He said, best song. You can believe in whatever you want to believe in. It's all the same thing. Like, literally. You can read every spiritual book. You can read every book holy book and if you know how to decode and read the signs it's all going to go back to the woman i mean we all came from one men and women came from a woman everybody has a mother that's the source of your life anyway so and you know the man the divine masculine and the divine feminine when they recognize each other there is no battle there's no struggle they just say okay it is what it is it's not going to be a struggle but when you're constantly being brainwashed and part of the divinity is being left out and oppressed, especially, you know, the feminine, then it's going to spring back with a vengeance. So if you're constantly, you know, trying to brush things under the, the rug and uh, take the woman out of religion and you only have men and it's a patriarchy, then that's going to start looking gay. Nothing against gay people, but where's the mother? You know, you can't have the son without the mother. Two men can't make no baby. Two men can't create life. So it's there's something strange when your religion doesn't involve a divine feminine aspect to it. It's there's something strange when everyone is sitting over here, you know, worshiping a man and then looking for eggs on Easter. You look at you the sperm looking for the egg. You still participating. And a pagan goddess religion. Uh oh, Andrea, sprinkle, sprinkle. Because think about, and I said this earlier, Jesus was born in the winter, which was in, according to the Bible, anyway, or according to whatever we celebrate, uh, which is the season of death. And then he died in the spring, which is the season of rebirth. So, I mean, what? And then you look for eggs. So it's just literally a fertility ritual. And they just put a man on it. <laughs> and then they forget about the woman. There is no egg without the woman. There's no Easter, a star, no rebirth without the woman. You can't come back. And the first person to recognize Jesus, that resurrection was a woman. Her egg dropped. <laughs> Okay. 
the crucifixion is a uterus and a fallopian tube. And the blood coming out is the period. Sprinkle, sprinkle. There you go. All right. It's a fertility ritual. It's a fertility everything. Everything you do on Easter has to do with the womb, the woman, the cycle, the period, the rebirth, the redropping of the egg, so you can get fertilized and bring life to the planet. That's my, that's right. If y'all sitting up there worshiping a man, you can't be reborn. That's why they put him in a cave with, with the symbol of a cave. They rolled a rock in front of the cave. That's a womb. Okay. He went there and then he came back to life. There you go. <laughs> you said Jesus is the Messiah, the great. Well, he came out of a woman, so he can't. He can't be higher than her because she made sure he got here. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If Mary said, nope, I ain't having this baby, give me that oregano, then you wouldn't have no Jesus. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. If, if Mary threw herself down a flight of stairs, you wouldn't have no Jesus. So speak on it. If Mary told... If Mary told everybody who the daddy was, you wouldn't have no Jesus. If Maury, if Maury Povich was back in the old days, y'all would know who the father was. Like, seriously. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Somebody said, not the oregano. Oregano, majorum. All right. That's literal. It's literal. Jesus wouldn't be here if he couldn't be birthed. Just like any of y'all. If y'all mama decided that y'all wouldn't gonna get here, y'all wouldn't be here. My mama decided I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be here either. So think about that. <laughs> you said the test results came in. Joseph, you are not the father. Oh my goodness. Who the daddy? Who the daddy? She got she she says God. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> if you're here to preach, great. But are you getting paid? You you passing around your tithes and offerings basket because we didn't ask you. <laughs> it's always those ones that are trying to spread the gospel that's the that ain't got no money. It's spread some money, sir. <laughs> then we might believe you. All right. Where do people go when they die? Well, it depends. Are you getting cremated? You getting buried? You, what cemetery are you going to? I don't know. They might carry you to the morgue, the coroner's office. Which funeral home are you going to? You going to a lot of places when you die. Where are you going to end up? I don't know. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> if somebody finds you, You know, some people probably get out more when they did. Like, okay, you stay in your house all day. You die. They're taking you to about five different places before you get to your final resting. Okay. I haven't been nowhere this many places in a long time. You might even go through a drive through if the, the, uh, the mortician is hungry on the way back from the hospital from picking you up. Anyway, sorry, that's probably too much information. Okay.
When I was a mortician, I used to play on music. We used to be like jamming. I'm going to play y'all some more music for y'all last songs for the funeral. Because I know y'all, they can't play no rap at the funeral. So we're going to go. The dark humor. The mortician career. I've I've talked a lot about this. Like, don't listen to these dust demons when they say you're gonna die alone. Most women die surrounded by family. Most single men die alone. And if they get found, you know, in time for they start really decaying, <laughs> good for them. If not, close casket or cremation. So definitely, you know, don't listen to these dust demons. Like, oh y'all gonna be dying alone. Most men live alone because they're like, nobody can stand them anymore. And they didn't do nothing with them li their lives. So they live in somebody's garage apartment or with a roommate or homeless under the bridge. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Nobody want to take care of them. You ain't got nobody to call. Your mama gone because she, you know, she way older. So she can't take care of you no more. You lost the house because you couldn't afford the taxes. Your cousins, they don't answer the phone. Your kids don't want nothing to do with you. Um, your ex-wife or your baby mama, they didn't already remarried and moved on and y'all sitting there looking stupid. So, so you got to treat women right. Even your daughters. <laughs> Mothers and daughters, sisters, cousins, whoever, you got to treat them right because when, you, when you're when you in need, they're going to turn, turn, turn their head. Nope. <laughs> you got to treat them right. But that's who's going to be taking care of you when you get old. Most likely. Do I have a coven? No. Why would I have a coven? I got some kids. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, women are usually the matriarchs of their family, and they usually are surrounded by grandkids, children, nieces, nephews, whatever, sisters. But Dusty's have to sit here and look up statistics instead of looking up how to make money. <laughs> That's okay, though. I hope it comes in handy when you eating cold raviolis out of a can. With your roommate. You got the Dusty's trigger, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. We have to, we have to realize, like, just as women have realized that they're divine. You see, men have taken their divinity for granted. And this is why I feel like this shift is occurring. Because men automatically think just because we're men, we're right. Just because we're men. You got to do this just because we're man. And the, the joke, the gag and the joke is you came from us. You have taken your divinity for granted and you're not doing much with it. Some of y'all aren't doing much with it. Some of y'all are making grand moves, but some of y'all are not. So when you take your div masculine divinity for granted, it gets lost and you can't find it. And then you blame the woman. When we die, I remember you saying, wait three days. Yeah. Don't go to the light. What do we do after that? I forgot. Girl, sprinkle, sprinkle. Girl, you'll know what to do. It'll become natural. It's just like water knows what to do. You are water. Just what water does in the cycle. You don't have to think about it. It's just going to happen. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Literally, don't worry about it. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Water doesn't sit there and worry about where it's going after it gets evaporated. It just goes where it goes. Okay. Okay. 
you always said that men don't love themselves at all and they degrade who they are just focusing on degrading women. Exactly. When you lost your focus on being the true divine masculine that you're supposed to be, you start focusing on wigs, beds, what other people are saying instead of yourself and how to get yourself together. You don't focus on what's important. You don't focus on what is going to create a better life for you or whoever is in your life or your family, you focus on everything else as a distraction. So you don't have to look within. So this is why I let the dusty stay in here. I let the dust demons stay in here because they need to understand one thing. Nothing is going to change unless you change yourself. And when you take your divinity for granted, you can literally tell you start to lose it. And then you can't find it again. And then now all of a sudden you in some woman's chat talking about wigs and you supposedly a grown straight man. So where's the divinity in that? I have no idea. But at the same time, I hope you find it, sir. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> anyway. So the divine feminine are finding their voice. Um, they're defined, you know, they're finding their value, their worth, and they're not basing it on what a man thinks. They're basing it on what they are showing the world how, you know, and how they are showing the world how to treat them. They're focusing on their divinity versus getting, um, you know, approval from some dusty that don't eat, that can't even buy you McDonald's. <laughs> Okay, we don't need your approval. You can't even afford a Happy Meal, sir. Your approval is not needed, nor is it necessary. He said the dust will reincarnate into gold diggers. Y'all better pray y'all will come back as women. So y'all got... <laughs> I bet all men do. You know what? I, not all men, but I, some, some men, some men. I bet they pray to reincarnate as a woman. I know they do. They have to. <laughs> and some of them do. The guys that have it locked down and know how to get their stuff and know how to, you know, work their masculine divinity or their whatever, they don't need to come back as a woman. But the ones that haven't figured it out, they probably wish they was born a woman or trying to come back as a woman. It's pleasing to be reborn as a woman. Yeah. <laughs> the guys that have it together though they're like please let me come back as a man so I can do this all again and even bigger but that's you know that's good you know at least you have goals <laughs> all right you said everybody pray for Darius's wife <laughs> Y'all yeah, pray for that inflation doll. Okay. Mm -hmm. You said people saying I turn people into sex workers. How can I do that? That's the oldest profession. I had nothing to do with that. And people aren't turning into sex workers. They're not sleeping with Dusty's for free anymore or letting Dusty sleep on their couch. They know their value and their worth and not, they're not dating losers anymore. People will say anything to get this message to stop. You know what I'm saying? They'll say anything. I bet you they can't even pay nobody's bills. Whoever's saying that. Oh, can, you pay, can you pay my bills? Okay, well, I'll go get it from another man. That means if you can't do your one job that you were put here on earth to do, which was to provide and protect women, then I'm going to go get another one. If that's if that's sex work, then that's sex work. I don't know. But if you as a grown man think I'm going to sit here and sleep with you on an air mattress with duct tape on it and roll around with you and you can't pay for nothing. Oh, I'm going to go get two more, not just one more. OK. And I'm going to come back with all the money and you're going to be kicked out. Okay, if you can't, you know, uh, if a man can't provide, all he's going to do is talk trash about a woman. That's all he's going to do until he reaches his divine masculine and his uh, 
ability to do what he was put on his earth to do. He's always going to have complaints. He's always going to be talking trash about women he's jealous of. He's always going to do that. And women who aren't sitting there going, you know, making excuses for their dusties are going to go to do the same thing. So whoever is saying that, you know, I feel sorry for them because I already know they're not living like me. And whoever they're dealing with or whoever they are, they live in lack and they have poverty lines. So I feel more sorry for them than anything. I really don't care. Okay. You said it's weird that a married man is on here. It's weird. It's weird that he know about wigs too, ma'am. And it's weird he don't know what a king size bed look like either. So you know he got an air mattress. He can't even identify a bed size. He don't. He never had a backboard, a headboard, or nothing. His, his stuff on the floor. <laughs> so we already know you giving yourself away, sir. You broke and dusty. And the shift, you know, into the divine feminine, you know, we don't put up with that mess no more. Now I need to go somewhere and figure it out. Okay. What is the shift? The shift into the divine feminine era. Come on now. You know, you oppress something so long, it's like a spring. It's going to bounce back with a vengeance. Boing, boing. <laughs> okay. Have you heard the 4B movement? No, I don't even know what that is, ma'am. Is it about hair? About is it about people getting hair to look like 4B hair, like getting perms and stuff? I think I've seen that on TikTok somewhere. Sparkle, sparkle. <laughs> I've seen that years ago. Okay. Mm-hmm. You definitely know saggy, baggy, dusty, crusty. <laughs> yeah. You said oregano is a cooking ingredient. Well, if you if you was into witchcraft, you would know what else is for. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Because y'all want to call me a witch. I know what medicinal herbs can do. I guess that means I'm a witch, right? Because I know how to embalm a body. I guess that. What does that mean? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Now y'all calling me, y'all didn't call me witch, devil. Make people into a uh, sex worker. Y'all didn't call me everything under the sun, but y'all never called me broke. <laughs> uh oh, Rachel, sprinkle, sprinkle. What do you think about working at Hooters? If you get a job, I wouldn't make that my absolute goal. I would make my goal to work at Hooters to find a sugar daddy and then not work no more. But I mean, it's better as, as gotta do what you gotta do, ma'am. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Have fun. That should be that should be just you know a temporary thing until you find a man that can take care of you or start your own business after you get his money. Okay. Mm -mm. What did you say? You said 4B is Korean women not dealing with men anymore. Oh, okay. Well, I thought it was something else. But, you know, whatever. As long as they're happy. Okay. I'll deal with their money all day. 
you don't have to deal with a man to deal with his money, but you have to deal with him for a little while to get his money and then do something else. If you don't want to deal with men, you know, some women like dealing with men. Some women get along with men. I get along with men easily if they if they got money. <laughs> All right. Do you have any advice for 18 year old? Um, have fun. Don't get pregnant until you meet a man that has money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. To make sure you possibly, hopefully, marry before you give birth. <laughs> but wait until you're like at least 25 and up. Sprinkle, sprinkle. There you go. Don't pay on dates. There you go. Also, know that you're a divine feminine being and don't let anyone treat you less than that. Don't deal with these dusties. Okay. I saw that Cat Williams thing. Yeah. You was telling it, huh? Okay. You said we love our leader. Yeah, sprinkle, sprinkle. Mm -hmm. Who are you leading, Darius? The dust demons? <laughs> All right. Beyonce new album. I talked about it. I really liked it. Yes, very good. Watch the beginning of the video. I'll talk more about it. What should we be aware of during the eclipse? How to balance emotions during this shift? Um, tap into your divine feminine energy. And don't look at the things without them glasses for eclipse. <laughs> the eclipse glasses. Don't look at it without that. And focus on your divine feminine energy growing stronger. There you go. God has a name. She is in the mirror. Okay, chill. You know, it must be scary now because I, I would have to like if I, I'm, I have to think about it. I've got to go in a few minutes, but it must be scary to as men to see so many women shifting their mindset into thinking in a different way. And to, a lot of women aren't worshiping a male deity anymore. It must be hard for men to see this and know that if this continues for longer that they're actually going to have to change or switch teams either way in order to even, you know, get someone that's worth having. And I think this is a great thing because a lot of people don't realize that women especially aren't seen as divine if they don't present themselves that way, if they don't act that way, and if they don't expect to be treated that way. So that's why women should always know their value and their worth and take nothing less. Oh, blessed. What does the eclipse bring such a riddling bad habits? What What does the eclipse bring such as? It doesn't bring anything. It's literally the moon crossing the sun, the feminine crossing the masculine, covering it up, raining over it, blocking it out. It's the divine feminine shift. If y'all want to make it bad, make it bad. If y'all want to go and do, you know, Rituals, go do rituals, but I'm just telling you what it is. Go do what you got to do. But honestly, it's just that. It's it's time for the, the divine feminine, and that's what it's symbolizing. Oh, of course people are scared. They didn't, they didn't oppress the divine feminine for a long time. Men should be scared, not women. If you are pick Misha enabling a Dusty, you're probably not going to be able to do it for much longer. So, I mean, uh, men are probably scared more than women, but fear... Is contagious when you don't know what you're really dealing with. Okay, I ain't worried about it. <laughs> I'm worried about it at all. I'm just like, okay, it's time. Let me get my divine feminine injured together. <laughs> oh, okay. Marriage is not the goal anymore. The goal is money. Security. So women are less likely to marry a broke man. 
and more likely to date several men with money in this day and era, age, okay? That's just what it is. Um, back in the old days, they also used to call unwedded women, unmarried women, witches who miraculously came up with money from several other men in the village, right? It's okay though, you know. I'd rather see women become smarter. And then when, you know, when they're ready to settle down and get married, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But it doesn't change anything. It, you can still live your life. And if marriage is your goal, then it's easy to get married as a woman. Just go find you an old man and they'll say, I do. They won't see you again. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> <laughs> and look, you could collect his, you could get in his will, be on the deed, and collect the life insurance if you're smart. Go get another one. So, ladies, do what you gotta do. Um, <laughs> That's not a problem over here, sir. We don't care about the percentage and the rates. We still gonna get our money, period. Divine feminine represents abundance, period. We still gonna make it. <laughs> you said they're finger mongering natural event as always. Okay. You don't have to fear monger anything. All you gotta do is research the weather patterns, get you a farmer's almanac, get you a weather pattern like website, get you a solar weather website, and that's all you need, okay? You'll be able to see the same stuff. They don't expect people to research that kind of stuff. So they, they surround you with fear mongering and stuff like that. Okay, just like Columbus did when he knew that there was going to be an eclipse and he got to the new world and he said, if you don't do what I tell y'all to do, natives, if y'all don't do what I tell y'all to do, I'm going to make the sun disappear because he knew there was going to be an eclipse in a couple of days, right? So he used his knowledge of, you know, that there was going to be an eclipse to his advantage over the natives to get them to do what he wanted them to do. So they elites or whatever y'all want to call them, people that actually study solar weather, space weather, weather cycles on the planet, science, climate shifts, the people that actually study that stuff can predict it and use their money and shift it around the market to earn more money. And people like who are too busy on TikTok or the internet scrolling around, believe in the hype, instead of doing your research and paying attention to the signs and symbols around you, you don't know anything. So you just live in fear. But the education is free now. The knowledge is free. The, all the websites are free. You can go look that stuff up. You can buy you a farmer's almanac. You can do all this good stuff that will give you the same type of knowledge. But y'all be scrolling through TikTok, looking at, I don't know. <laughs> so get out of ignorance and get you some knowledge, man, sir. Darius gave us free blood to drink. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Don't I want to want that dust demon blood? <laughs> See, yeah. What do you think about the firmament in the Bible, Elon Musk? Etc. trying to break through the firmament glass ceiling. The firmament. Oh my goodness, the firmament. The glass ceiling. Elon Musk trying to shoot. They shoot the wrong thing. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Rockets ain't... Well, you know, um, I don't like... I haven't been keeping up with that lately. I don't really care about that anymore. It's. I mean, it's just men playing with toys. To me. <laughs> okay. 
as much as they've tried, they really haven't gotten far that far. You know what I'm saying? It's just silly. Mm -hmm. As much money as they have spent on trying to do all that crazy stuff, they could have cured poverty, world hunger times three. They still shooting stuff into space trying to I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I really don't care anymore about that. Okay. Stop giving energies to Dusty's in the chat. Protect your energies. Just block. Did y'all hear about women randomly getting punched? Nope. I don't watch the news. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Sorry. I got to go. I'll see y'all on the next one. Thank y'all so much, everybody who donated. I appreciate you. Thank y'all, everybody who clicked like on the video. If y'all haven't clicked like, y'all click like. And y'all, everybody who are new subscribers, welcome to the channel. I'll see y'all soon. Bye.